All right, we are going to get this thing going here about one o'clock. Just giving uh, Brother Jacob some time to um, join into the thing here. So we will be discussing James White's book, The Forgotten Trinity, today, and um, showing from the scriptures that it's wrong. So. Just waiting for Brother Jacob to join here. Good afternoon. Hi, everybody. Or good morning or evening or wherever you're at. Okay. There you are. Can you hear me, brother? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Cool. Is it loud enough? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, I'm trying out the new microphone, so. Oh, good. Yeah. Are we live? <laughs> yeah, we're live. Cool. We can just talk about whatever here till about one o'clock. We'll give people time to join in and whatever. Okay. So, tried to find my book, the, the Forgotten Trinity, my copy of it, the old one. Could mm -hmm. not find the thing for the life of me. Looked all through my library. Everything else, so you know, I mean, it's such an important book, you know. It, it just, eh. yeah, I, I usually keep it right by my bed. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on my nightstand that has a shelf for it and everything. Yeah, <laughs> right. Little light shines on it and stuff, you know. It's, yeah. yeah, right. That's okay. I I have both of them, so we're yeah, fine. yeah. Let me turn this off. Oh boy. So when was the his newest book was it released in 2020 or back in 2019 um, If I am not mistaken I think it was November 2019 mm -hmm. I believe Okay. I mean, because when I had bought the, because because I, I had bought the his the the original one, um, you know during during the summer months of 2019, and uh, and then I'd seen that he was gonna have this one coming out, and I was like, oh okay, but I got this one anyway. And then, um, as we'll cover in the stream today, it's literally the same book. Yep. I saw uh, um, he was hawking his book or something over there in South Africa at some seminary cemetery, and uh, I, I I I thought I'll watch this, you know, just see what he has to say. Oh, man, I can't only watch a couple minutes of that guy. It's just yeah, it's like watching paint dry, you know. Oh I mean, yeah. Speaking without the Holy Spirit, you know, talking through you is. I mean, his words are very impressive, and his his his, you know. Enunciation. It's it's oh, quite yeah. professional. And the way that we speak about our God is so <laughs> I know. I've I've watched a few of his debates just to you know on the Trinity thing. It's so cringy, you know, to watch. 
uh, people fall for that stuff though. They want the religion. They want the uh, the scholar, the guy that they can look up to. Exactly. Um, so that's what it's all about. But so only got about two minutes yet. We'll get started on this whole thing here. Yeah, we're not really getting much rain. I'm seeing people saying you know, about rain in the comments there. Not getting much rain up here. <laughs> no. Cold and snow. And, of course, the format of this thing to everybody that's tuning in, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, – going over James White's book, The Forgotten Trinity, and looking at a bunch of def different stuff from Scripture, um, debunking not only the Trinitarianism stuff, but modalism as well. Gonna be, you know, we'll see where the Lord takes this whole thing, you know, what, what all we want to uh, cover. But then at the end, we'll have, you know, some questions and answers. People can ask, you know, either myself questions or brother Jacob here. So... To answer someone's question very quickly, um, someone asked uh, um, if he changed the, the formatting um, of his book. It's That's basically what it is. It's like literally just it's it's literally the same thing. So if you got the original, you're not you're not missing anything. He just he just made it uh, more cleaner and modern. He redid some of his charts. Other than that, it's the same thing. Yeah. I guess probably took off the uh, Tricatra from not only the cover, but probably throughout the book. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's basically changed. So okay, one o'clock. <clears throat> so we'll get started. Um today we're gonna be talking about the book The Forgotten Trinity by James White. And um it kind of represents the the more common there they are, Brother Jacob's holding them. Kind of represents a lot of the common uh defenses for the Trinity and um and his his answers, quote unquote, answers for those of us that do not believe in the Trinity. And uh, to plainly state it, by the way, before we get even started, um, either Brother Jacob or myself are modalists or oneness or whatever. We believe in the biblical Godhead. OK, that man is made in God's image. Just make it as simple as we can. Man is made in God's image. Man has a body, a soul and a spirit. That is put my hand over this way. Three. Okay, but you're just one man. It's just that simple. Okay, all the philosophical little arguments and everything else. Uh, you don't need all that stuff. It just we're made in God's image. We have a body, soul, spirit. That's three, but we're one person. That's all God is. Three parts to one person. Simple. So, but uh, go ahead and get started here, brother. Uh, show you, know, you can go into some of what the Lord's shown you about this book. I guess we'll start with the main differences. What are the differences between the two? You can show some of that. Well, th th this is um, this one, or yeah, the, the, this one here is the old one. Um, this is the one that came out. I look at the copyright information. Um, I th uh, in nineteen ninety eight is when this first came out, and uh, this. So now it's been just a little over twenty years where he, uh, he revised this one. And like we said, like I said a minute ago, it's literally the same book. If if you get if you get this one, you're not missing anything. Um, it's all the same information. But obviously, the big difference here is the old one here. He's got a graven image of the witch's trichature on there. This is a common symbol that you Trinitarians all the time try to say, "Oh, this is the Trinity." No, that this is a symbol that's existed for millennia and it's been used by witches. Okay, mm -hmm. which we'll probably get into some of that later because there's a whole lot of Trinity. 
the the whole concept of the Trinity thing is not new. It's you can find them in all sorts of pagan cultures, but that's a whole different thing there. Sure. Um, but the thing here, this is his new cover. Um, he got rid of the witch's trichatra, but he still got a triangle. And, um, and and again, I'm sure this is me being conspiratorial, quote unquote. But if you take take notice here, you got the O smack center of the of the triangle. But that's just me being yeah. conspiratorial. Nice that entering into Nuttyville, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Doctor White but, would never agree. <laughs> oh sh- oh sure oh oh we're just a bunch of simple and, things you know you know and it's funny because years ago i made a video i don't remember when it was a couple years ago but i said about his book the king james only controversy i said why is it endorsed by a jesuit norman geisler and um and you know i referred to his forgotten trinity thing as well and that the old book is endorsed has an open endorsement by mitch Paqua. Mitchell Packwell, mm-hmm. who was a, you know, it says SJ right be, beside his name. You can show that, brother. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Right there. It's showing up. If, you have it, uh, if it'll focus, but it's still not wanting to focus there. But there in the upper corner. Um, I don't know why it's not focusing. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right there. You can see the SJ, but uh, I mean, a, well, I can read it if you want. a Jesuit priest. Yeah. And ironically, Somehow that that uh, endorsement didn't make it onto the new book. Not yep. there. Hmm. How about that? That's conspiratorial. Yeah, it's not there at all. That's conspiratorial, though. So we won't go there because as Christians, you can't talk about conspiracy. Right. Well, what's interesting too about this one because those same endorsements. Um, where are they at? The same endorsements that you see in the back of this one. He's got seven. He's got Norman Geisler, as we just mentioned, who. Again, who is he's not a Jesuit priest, but he did train at a Jesuit university, and he was also the president. Uh, I forget what's I forget what it is off the top of my head, but it was some Trinitarian organization. He was the president, of that. and speaking of which, Gaius actually just died of last, of last year. Hmm. Uh, he knows better now. Well, yeah, um, we know where he went. All right, and then he has all their people: uh, Doctor John H. Armstrong, Doctor J. I. Packer, Doctor Gleason L. Archer, Doctor John MacArthur, uh, and then. Carrie D. McRobert. Some of these guys, I don't even know who these people are, but um, but then uh, he has the same recommendations on the inside on the cover, except one person, which which is that Jesuit. So that Jesuit endorsement has been completely removed. And uh, you know, I wonder why that is, you know. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, too, the thing old Norman Geisler wasn't a Jesuit priest, so he's not a Jesuit. Well, you can look it up. The some Jesuit provincials came out and they said, um, if you you know if you've gone to a Jesuit school, if you even attended a retreat, you don't even have to be a full Jesuit priest. If you had any kind of things like that, then you are part of the Jesuit family. We brought that out in our our video on Ken Hoven. So anyhow, just wanted to mention that. So uh, Norman Geisler was a Jesuit, according to the Jesuits themselves. Might not have been a Jesuit priest, but he was a Jesuit in terms of their what how they classify. But um, you know, anyways, we'll continue here. You can go ahead. Okay, um, I guess I'll, we can go through some of the stuff he says in here. I wrote a, mm-hmm. a handful of them down, and believe me, um, there's a lot of things we, we could talk about, but we'll, we'll be here for a while. Just in some of the and some of the stuff, just and believe me, some of the stuff he says in there is is just all right, hilarious. Um. So I guess we'll start here. This is on uh, page. I'm I'm reading from his new one. Um, we'll start here on page ten. Um, and like I said, we're not going to cover everything he says. But on page ten, um, he gets into the thing of the of the chapter heading. Why is the why why the forgotten Trinity? Quote unquote. Why is this thing forgotten? He gets into his you new know, his his introduction here. But then he says this. We hang a, a person's very salvation upon the acceptance of the doctrine. Yet if we are honest with ourselves. We really aren't sure exactly why. <laughs> and so, and see, I'll, I'll try to show these best that I can. Hopefully a little focus. Oh, just, just give the page number, you know, that, that's really all. I mean, you can, okay. But okay. You know, I'm just saying, you know, you know if, if you can't show it or whatever else, I mean, just give the page number. That's fine. All right. But the, the point is, I look at that, I'm just like, so you're going to hang my salvation on this, but 
I don't. He, he even just said we're not sure why. Yeah. And it's funny because there is a statement because I, I have other Trinitarian books I've been you know researching and reading, and and, there, and there's a statement we we've all heard. It's that it's that statement. If you try, uh, um, oh, what's it like? It, it's it's like if you try to figure out the Trinity, you'll lose your mind. If but if you deny it, you'll lose your soul. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, come on, folks. That that's you. You want to talk about a cultic statement? I mean, just sit down and shut up. Don't ask questions, but accept the doctrine. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Sounds kind of Catholic in a way, but you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you're an Orthodox Christian, you know, we got to remember that. Mm hmm. <laughs> uh, but continuing here, this is on pages fourteen and fifteen, still of the same chapter. He then he says this. Um, to worship must worship God as he exists, not as we wish him to be. The essence of idolatry is the making of images of God. And, <laughs> you know, you know, and, and this too. Um, but he continues here. An image is a shadow, a false representation. We may not bow before a statue or figure, but, but if we make an image of God in our mind that is not in accord with, with God's revelation of himself, then we are not worshiping in truth. Since sin and rebellion are always pushing us toward false gods and away from the true God, we must seek every day to conform our thinking and our worship to God's straight edge standard of truth revealed so wonderfully in scripture, you know, of the thousands of versions, you know, mm -hmm. um, but continuing, we must be willing to love God as he is. And that includes every aspect of his being that might, or I'm sorry, every aspect of his being that might due to our fallen state be offensive to us or beyond our limited uh, capacities to fully comprehend. God is not to be edited to fit our ideas and pre and preconceptions. <laughs> and, and instead we must always be asking him to graciously, graciously open our clouded mind, reveal himself to us so that we may love him truly and worship him. All right. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just I, I, I just laughed at the like graven images. We'll tell that to the billions of Trinitarians that yeah. draw yeah. them out and think this way. Yeah, it, that's the thing. It, it, dealing with Trinitarians for years now, they just they they fall all over themselves. It's just so weird. Like we were talking the other day, brother, and it just they don't even know what they believe. Yeah, and, well, we don't believe that. And, you know, well, we do, but we we don't. But we but I'm not sure. You know, that's you know. that's. The problem. I, you see us all the time when you, when you talk to, like you said, we you all you gotta do is talk to these people. They don't know, and and that's why you say a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon when they come to the door and they just start ripping these people apart that you know, actually give them the time of day, because they're those guys are ready and trained to just just shred them to pieces because they don't know their own doctrine, and then they come running back to the you know some all these great apologists and they start getting all philosophical with it, and they go, wow, what a speech, you know. <laughs> And they still don't know anything. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but you know, the, I think um, the tragic part is a lot of these people have no idea that the, that the whole concept of this multiple gods, but they're just one God, and they'll they'll vehemently yeah. deny that. Of course, if you're new to this whole argument, they'll say, "Well, that's not true. We don't believe in multiple gods. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, but we don't believe in multiple gods." Uh, you know, and and they'll just try to deny that, and it's just you believe in multiple gods, but that whole concept, I mean, I've preached on this thing um, of these be thy gods, O Israel, and it's a golden calf, a golden calf. And yet they're, they're calling them gods. And you look right. through ancient culture, which, you know, we'll probably bring this up later on, but you look through ancient culture and it's all through there. This thing of this, oh, yeah. this tri theistic, you know, deity type of thing. It's all through yeah. there. The Trinity is not new. It's it, goes way back to ancient Babylon. You're yep. worshiping a false god when you do it. Yep. When you get into this whole thing. So, but go ahead. You can continue reading some stuff from that. Okay. This is on page 22 and 23 uh, and going into in a little bit of 24. He's now actually breaking down, okay, what exactly is the Trinity in its most basic form? Um, I mean, because you know, he lays out the basic thing and then he, each chapter is him kind of building off of that. But he says here, the bottom of 22, he says this, I I think this is hilarious, and this is exactly what we're talking about, how these guys have to just change the meaning of everything. They can't deal with just, just words. He says here, quote, The second way in which our language fails us to do with, uh, with what I call excess baggage, he has in quotes. Uh, words often carry with them baggage that has become attached to the meaning of a word. 
The way we use the word may cause us to conjure up particular mental images every time we hear it. The most glaring example of this is the word person, a word that is often used when discussing the Trinity. And this is where it gets funny. Uh, when we use the word person, we attach it to all sorts of baggage that comes from our own personal experiences. We think of a physical body, an individual, separate from everyone else. We think of a spatial location, physical attributes like height, weight, age, all things associated with, with our common use of the word person. When we use this word to describe a, a divine person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we tend to drag along with, with it the baggage that comes from our common use of, of the term in everyday life. Many people, upon hearing the word person used of the Father, for example, conjure up an image of a kind old grandfatherly figure who is the person of the Father. He is separate, different, limited. Everything we think of when we think of the term person. Um, it will be our task, and it is difficult. I, I'm sorry. It will be our task, and it is a difficult one, to labor to such, or I'm sorry, to separate such baggage from our thinking and use such terms in, in very specific, limited ways so as to avoid unneeded confusion. And I'm, just, I'm sitting there and just like, come on. And then, see, this is what we're talking about with the Trinitarian thing. This happens all the time. They constantly are redefining words uh -huh. you know and that's the thing again with the thing with person i don't need to run any dictionary or anything to tell you what person means in the bible i can show you the scriptures where a person is that they are a body soul and a spirit uh -huh. there are three things that make up one you know yeah so yeah. it is with god and then there and there are scriptures that outright refer to god as being one person because you can't show the scriptures there there was persons or anything like that. Yeah. You can't do it. Even, even in the new versions, you can't do it. You know, you know, mm -hmm. obviously it's a, little, it's a little easier, but especially the King James, it's impossible. There's no way. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just common sense. Person is singular. It's not that hard, but you know, I mean, it plays these little Jesuit mind control games, you know, where you say, now we have to really look at this word and, and, and think we shouldn't be confined to what most people think is the meaning. And <laughs> Okay. Mm. Oh, believe me, everyone, it gets worse. But oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, then on, on the same page, here, this is on page twenty-three. Then he lays out a very basic definition, which is what the Trinitarian, which I think we all know as the basic thing here, where he says, uh, "Within the," uh, he, he says here, "Here's the basic, basic definition: within the one being that is God, there exists exists eternally three equal and, and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit." Okay, that's. We all know that's what they say, but it, you know what's interesting? I just kind of interject here because we just got done talking about changing words. You do realize, everyone in in, in the Bible, the the word God means the Father, like explicitly. That's how it's defined all the New Testament. You can't get around that, and that's and see that's the problem when you talk to a Trinitarian. When you when you say when you say Jesus Christ is God, they're thinking of I mean they're they're thinking of a triangle that says Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and, and you know not 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 you know, mm -hmm. but they're all. That's what they're thinking when they see God, and 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 James White mentions that later on in this book. He act, that's how he he defines it. Um, but continuing, this is again continuing off of this. He goes on to the next page, in page twenty four. He says, um, he says, as I warned before, uh, we must not succumb to the temptation to read the term person as if we were talking about finite, self contained human beings. What person means when we speak of the Trinity is quite different than when we speak of creatures such as ourselves. And he, he never and he never really defines it either. That's the thing. It's just this ambiguity because they don't know how to define it. And which, you know, I, I don't have the quotes pulled up, but because, again, doing research, a lot of these, you know, church fathers um, that they that, that, like, and the Catholics quote to all the time. There's quotes where there's their question. They're going like, yeah, we're calling them persons because we don't know what to call them. Like they're openly like, uh, you know, they didn't get it. And, and, and those are the guys that they came in these councils to form the doctrine and they, and they admitted, yeah, we don't even know what this is, you uh -huh. know? So, um, can look at my notes here. But see, uh, it's not like confusion is actually, you know, sound doctrine. Oh, sure. If you're confused and that means you're right. <laughs> like I shared in that video of mine, you know, the literally Catholic, uh, what was he, Bishop or something like that. And he said, when Bishop you're confused, Baron? you know, then that means that you've, um, then you understand it. Because you're confused. Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah. Good. 
Uh, in the next chapter, he then gets into a thing about God, a brief introduction. That's the chapter hitting. Page 31, uh, he says the, the bottom of the, of the paragraph, anyone who thinks, I'm sorry, anyone who thinks that, that the doctrine of the Trinity compromises absolute monotheism simply does not understand what the doctrine is teaching. No. Um, continuing on page 35, again, like I said, there's a lot of stuff we could cover, but I'm just hitting the big ones. He then, I thought this is funny again. Um, he starts a new, he starts a new sub uh, heading page 35. And he says this uniqueness, other uh, otherness it is a part of the meaning of the word holy itself. And God makes it plainly known that he is holy. No images, no likenesses of him are to be allowed for, for such, for such to create a connection that does not exist. You know, oh, and, 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 and I, I wrote a footnote. It's like, okay, tell that to the billions of Trinitarians that draw pictures. And I, I love that thing where Trinity, the, you get people that say, well, I don't draw it. You don't draw it because you, be, be, because you have no talent. You have no art skills. Let's just be real here. If you did, you'd be drawing it. Just mm -hmm. come on. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, you know, I, you know the mark, I just got to say this, brother. The mark of go a con ahead. man is they will they will say one thing and do another. You see that with the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees and the scriptures, they're saying, "Oh, we worship God," and, and they don't. You know, we, right. we're we're going to follow the Old Testament law, and they don't. You know, James White, oh, I believe the Word of God is our final authority. He doesn't believe it for one second. He cannot no. hold up a Bible and say, "This is the book right here, God's Word." No. Perfect. No, I'm, I'm gonna you say because he's got he's got a whole page worth of versions he quotes, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just yeah. Uh, he, predominantly, he quotes the New American Standard. That's his go-to, but he does he will refer to other ones all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because it lines up with the Trinity thing, really, in, in oh, reality, yeah. because oh, yeah. Trinity is three. It's three, but it's only actually one. And you know, well, okay, you have multiple Bibles, but you just stand up in the pulpit. You can't say, "I believe the Bibles." say i believe this the different scriptures that contradict each other say um no that none of these translations are inspired that say you you just have to say the bible says i'm a bible believing christian using singular bible when you mean multiple you know it's the same thing with the trinitarians they they say singular god but they mean multiple gods multiple persons so yep but go ahead um, this is on page 44, um, bottom of the, bottom of the page, he says, John didn't write the, uh, and now, uh, and now he, now he's talking about the gospel of John, that, that, that into that, that the prologue, the, you know, of, uh, verses one to 18, um, he's talking about this and how it's so beautiful and, you know, and he gets into all this stuff here, but he says the bottom of page 44, John didn't write the prologue in English and the person who wishes to delve deeply into his meaning will seek to hear him speaking as he once spoke in, in the beautiful Greek language. So what, that's what he does. The most of the book is just go back and look at all these Greek words and, you know, like, look how smart I am, you know? Um, so he gets into a bunch of stuff here. Um, uh, th then he gets into this thing. Where he gets in the phrase with God. Um, he says here, um, kind of middle of the page in page 48, just as Greek verbs are often more expressive than their English counterparts, so too are Greek prepositions. Here, John uses the preposition, whatever, uh, prose, I think it's how he, he's got here, some Greek word. Um, the term has a wide range of meanings depending on the context in which it is found. In this particular instance, the term speaks to a personal, personal relationship, in fact, to intimacy. So, so we get into that whole thing that you've covered with his uh with his buddy what's what was his face like jeff durbin the they're face to face also they're you know okay oh it's, it's oh yeah he but he gets into this here uh it, continuing it is the same term the apostle paul uses when he speaks of how we presently have a knowledge comparable to seeing in a dim mirror but someday in eternity we will have clear knowledge of intimate knowledge for we shall see face to face He's, he's quoting a new version of uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 12 in the new, in this new American standard. I think that's what it was. When you are face to face with someone, you have nowhere to hide. You have a relationship with that person, whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the start of the next paragraph, he says, John 1, 1, B. John says the word uh, was eternally face to face with God. That is the word has eternally had it, had a relationship with God. Yuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so two gods yeah ex exactly and, th and that's funny because a lot of these new versions i'll interject here 
they don't you see because he's going back to the Greek to have it like to you know to shove in the the face to face thing, but mm-hmm. a lot of the newer translations they're actually putting that in there. Like I cover a thing on my channel over I think two years ago with the new thing called the Passion Translation whole thing there, <laughs> um, which is really wicked. They're in they're into like the whole like the whole apostolic uh, like a new, new apostolic reformation, just charismatic taken to a whole new level. But he actually the guy actually translates face to face and he's t- telling how it's like an intimate thing and. You know, like, and I first saw that, I was like, okay, yeah, that's kind of kind of weird. But they're openly pushing the Trinity thing more and more. Mm-hmm. Um, Get closer the to very the next time of the Antichrist showing up and that satanic Trinity. Yeah. But, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, you're fine. Um, page 49, uh, the next page, he says, the top of the page, someone such as John would never think that there were two eternal beings. John will explain himself soon enough. And, well, exactly. <laughs> You believe in one God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, page 56. We're still talking about the Gospel of John here. Um, he then talks about the phrase, um, the word became flesh. Um, that's a big one for the Trinitarian things. They, they use a lot. So he gets into this, he, but he says here, and the word became flesh. Here John uses agnito. Greek thing, a word that refers to an action in time, and the reason is clear. The word entered into human existence, became flesh, a particular point in time, which is, again, you're denying that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. We'll cover that more later because he talks about that. Um, he continues, the logos was not, the, that's the Greek word for the, what they try to say, you know, mm-hmm. says, but uh, the logos was not eternally flesh. He existed in a non-fleshly manner in eternity past, but at a blessed point in time at the incarnation, the logos became flesh, the eternal experience time. And again, the thing is you got Cause again, if you understand the Trinitarian thing, when they start telling you, uh, just to interject this, so we're all clear here, when they start saying that it's all like same steps and they're, they're co-equal and co, you know, all this stuff. And you know, it's the same substance. What they mean is, and this is why you check out the new versions, the new versions, and for example, in John 4.24, take out the definitive article, Agile A, where it says where it says God is a spirit. They just say God is spirit. And because the Trinitarian thing, when you when you when it gets right down to the core of it, they and James White says this later on, that they just have three entities, three spirits that are existing. There are three spirits, and then and then two of them are invisible, you know, the Father and the and the Holy Spirit. You know, and then and then and then and then the word the logos, you know, logos, logos, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And then he took on flesh. But it's interesting too, though. Again, like it, just a cursory glance, a glance of reading the Bible. Uh, I thought it says there's one spirit, mm-hmm. not three. Mm-hmm. You know, That's the problem. And then you get the Old Testament appearances of Jesus Christ. You know, and uh, yeah. well, obviously they have a thing for that. That's what a theophany or a Christophany, and it's not really what it is. It's just a foreshadowing, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, blah, blah. <laughs> it was, a, it was, a, it was um, not quite a fleshly body. It was more of a spiritual body, but it was, just, it didn't, you know, it just it was a spirit that looked like flesh, but it wasn't really flesh. <laughs> exactly. Yep. You know, who being in the form of God, you know, what mm-hmm. that means, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, following the actually uh, actually covering the thing about the Antichrist thing, the next page, page fifty seven. He's uh, he's still he's still talking about this the thing here of the war becoming flesh. But he says here a new paragraph. Why is John so concerned about this? We note that he repeats this emphasis in First John one one through five, and then goes so far as to say that anyone who de- goes so far as to say that anyone who denies that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is the is the Antichrist. <laughs> It's like, no. So, but this the obviously we, we already knew this, but by his own mouth, his or his own words, you know, he is an antichrist. Mm-hmm. And, because again, that's the thing too. Every new version tweaks First John four and and for and Second John two seven to and to tweak to say has come or came or mm-hmm. something like that. Which I did a video recently about that on my channel. I'm not gonna get into it, but the point is, there's a huge difference between <laughs> has come and is come. Yeah, if you can't see that, then well, you you get some problems. But mm-hmm. uh, but I digress. <laughs> um, continuing this, we're still talking about the same thing here. Now we're on page fifty nine. Uh, he's quoting a whole bunch of translations now because now he's talking about uh, verse eighteen, where, where, it's, where it says the only begotten Son, and he gets into all these different. He lists a bunch of different translations, but then he says here at the bottom of the page, the KJV and the New King James follow a ladder. 
or later uh, less primitive text in reading the only begotten son rather than the only begotten God, new America, which it's, it's so funny. Well, we don't believe multiple gods. Well, your, your new version just declared that there is right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that, and then that one's called new American standard, which is, uh, white's favorite one to go to we have a textual variant pitting the earliest oldest manuscripts whatever you know of the gospel of john against the latter bulk of manuscripts without going into a lot of detail there is every reason to accept the reading of the earliest manuscripts you know without getting into detail huh you know and to see the later um 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 and the nation as a natural mistake made by scribes which is what he is, uh, who were who were accustomed to to the phraseology of uh, phraseology only begotten son. Mm -hmm. So you know again, and, and he does this through his book with the King James only controversy. He'll get into these things where it's just plainly heretical in the new version, and he'll defend it because the oldest texts are there, and they they say this. So we have to go with the oldest readings and 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 whatever else. Well, the very common argument against the oldest readings, oldest readings. And, and you can get into the whole Sinaiticus thing as a forgery and all that. But the, the, the best argument against it is if it's really old and probably no one ever used it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why it survived all that time. But okay. Let's just say that that's the right reading that only begotten God is the right reading and only begotten son is a newer perversion of that. Then you're basically saying that there are two gods, a, a God and a begotten God, you know, so you, you defend the new version, you're defending heresy. It's that simple. So, okay. Then we move into chapter five, and, and uh, uh, this is where he actually starts to deal with some of like what he calls the trouble passages that throw a wreck for the Trinity. You know, and we'll cover <laughs> cover some of those here. Uh, but he starts out here on page. This is chapter five, page sixty three. Um, and uh, this is what I was talking about earlier, where, he, where with this idea where they were all spirits in eternity past. This is where he talks about this. Page uh, bottom of page sixty three, he says, "Quote: Think it, think of it this way: in eternity past, which is you know it's eternity, but you know before the creation, mm -hmm. what he's saying there. Um, in eternity past, the Father, Son, and Spirit voluntarily and freely chose the roles that they would take in bringing about the redemption of God's people. <laughs> this is what is called the eternal covenant of redemption. Wow, I <laughs> that down or something. That was impressive. I know." <laughs> but he but he continues by saying the father chose to be the the font and source of the eternity of the work the son chose to be the redeemer and to enter into human flesh as one subject to the father you know and the spirit chose to be the sanctifier of the church the indwelling the, the indwelling testifier of jesus christ each took different roles of necessity they could not all take the same role and do the same thing or same things excuse me see that's not true i can prove that's not true i mean they I heard that they the way that they got their different roles is they they had a, a Tetris tournament and whoever won got to choose. You know, I mean, there's about as much scripture for that as there is for that. No, well, that's that's what I, I wrote a note there. Like they were, I, I wrote a note like I was like so like the persons like we're like pulling straws here. Like, <laughs> what do you want to be? I don't know. You know, what do you want to do? I don't know. Let's just pick something <laughs> all spirits. You know, it, it's kind of weird too when you think about it too, because if they're having this like the, the, this like eternal loving relationship with each other, but then they chose the roles, yeah. so then yeah, How so then that's not, that's not saying prior to that, then what happened then? Because because again, the trinitarian thing is they say, well, see, God is love. Well, wait, using your logic, then where was the love prior to them assuming the roles? You see what I'm saying? This yeah. stuff is just ridiculous. You yeah, Cookieville. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I passed it. Uh, uh, no, uh, we'll continue here. Same chapter this is the bottom of page 80 or sorry, uh, page 68. Uh, he's again, he's, he's quoting a different bunch of verses trying to explain who Jesus is within the Trinity, you know? And, um, he says here, quote, yet, yet when we see the Lord Jesus doing exactly what, what we would expect the incarnate son to do, we find that, that we find this being used as an argument against his deity. So those who put forward such arguments have already made up their minds. I thought this was hilarious right here. They are not deriving their beliefs from scriptures, but are forcing their those beliefs onto scriptures. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. You know, you know, you know, you know person really doesn't mean per, you know. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> but he along with it. <laughs> yeah. 
But continuing, Thomas's Thomas's confession is is in perfect harmony with the fact that the incarnate Son spoke of the Father as his God. As long as one recognizes the word as the word God can refer to the Father, to the Son, to the Spirit, or to all three persons at once, no scripture for that one. The the uh, the asserted contradiction is seen to be nothing. The, the asserted contradiction, because it is, uh, is is seen to be nothing more than a circular argument designed to avoid having to make the same confession that Thomas made long ago. And he's referring to John uh, twenty of uh, twenty eight, uh, where he where, 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 where Thomas says, "My Lord and my God." Yeah, that's what he's referring to. Yeah, yeah. But this is where it gets funny. Keep in mind, this is a revision. He's had 20-something years to re revise this, and he actually has a typo <laughs> right after it. Because the, where it, then the, 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 the subheading in the old one where, where it said God overall, this, he, he, I don't know how he did this, but he managed to combine them <laughs> like a moron, you know? Yeah. And, and by the way, there are other typos in this thing, by the way. I'm not even joking. There, this, he's had 20 years to revise this thing, and there's actually added typos. <laughs> That's pretty bad. That weren't in this one, which I thought was hilarious. I think overall could be a last name, maybe. That's why I put it together. I don't know. We're in overalls? I don't know. <laughs> hey, there you go. There you go. You're on the function there. <laughs> but this is uh but this is funny because now he's dealing with Romans 9 5, um, which is which is again one of these tricky passages, you know, because it because it's because referring to Jesus Christ where where it where it says in there uh concerning who the flesh you talk about the Jews. You concern the flesh whom Christ came, who is overall God blessed forever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say God the Son. It doesn't say the Son of God. It says God. You know, and which, again, you get, that, like, you get the thing of his authority, who is over all. Right. If there's three exactly. options up there, then that would mean that, that the Father and the Holy Spirit are subservient. Exactly. Exactly, and so and so that and so that that causes a problem. If Jesus is being called overall, like you're saying overall, then what? Okay, what does that then say for the other two people? So that's that, and that's the problem you run into. That's why it's called Godhead. He's God, and he's head of all things. You know, mm -hmm. not that hard to figure out. Which is funny because he 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 talks about that in the moment. But anyway, continuing, he 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 quote all a bunch of different versions because it, it's so confusing. And this version renders it this way, and we're just and we're not really sure. And you know, but this is I thought this was hilarious. Page seventy, middle of the page, he says, <laughs> "This is hilarious." We should remember that punctuation did not exist in the most primitive manuscripts of the New Testament. <laughs> Hence, punctuation is an interpretational issue. <laughs> <laughs> we have to decide where to place periods and commas on the basis of Paul's style and his statements elsewhere. So you're your own God. It's interpretational. You put them where you want. You're he, that's what he's saying. You're you're you are rewriting what you want it wanted to say. He's only yep. a minute, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why that's why it's impossible to, to debate somebody like James White because he just is a rubber roller, you know. Well, three inches can be here, it can be there, it can be there, it can be here, you know. There's no standard for truth. So it's just a waste of time. Right. Um, I mean, there's some other things on here. Like, again, like he uh, he tries talking about 1 Timothy 3.16. Well, he mentions he briefly 1 Timothy 3.16, but he can't. Again, that one's destroyed in the new version. So it's, you know, uh, then he brings up, the, again, Hebrews 1, 6 through 8. You know, he talks about that one. Titus 2.13 is another big one they love to use to rip on the King James, but that's a whole different thing there. We're not going to get into but. Which again proves who Jesus is. I mean, because he's the, the same. Excuse me, the same titles are being referred of the Father being referred to Jesus there. So, you know, so it's it's tricky. You know, <laughs> um, page. Uh, you know, he takes jabs on on the King James, saying like it didn't fall. It didn't fall like the sharp rule thing. Um, he talks about that, but I but this one is hilarious, and this is one. Um, when I I just I think this is hilarious. This entire book he's he's been telling you up to this point, Jesus is not the Father. He's not the Father. Not the Father. Okay, fine. For for sake of argument here, then he deals with Isaiah nine six. Here's and here this I thought this was hilarious. So again, he 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 has here the New American Standard rendition of it, which is it's fairly similar. I mean, I I don't agree with the changes, but it's similar enough. And I'll read I'll hear I read what he has here. Mm -hmm. Run for, for a child for a child will be born to us a son will be given to us and the government will rest on his shoulders his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god 
eternal father. So the kingdom says everlasting. Okay. Okay. You know, I don't like I said, I don't get the change, but whatever. Same thing. You know, eternal father, prince of peace. And that's, and that's Isaiah 9, 6 in the American standard. Mm-hmm. Well, this entire, this entire time he's telling you he's not the father. And so this entire section, it goes on for, you know, half of this page, page 79. And then, and then the other half of the, the other page, he just want he latches onto the phrase mighty God and tries to explain that one. He doesn't even deal with what actually says eternal father, even though he claims that Jesus is not the father. But here you have a verse he's quoting even from his new version that says he's the father, you know, mm-hmm. and he doesn't even touch it. He does not even touch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I read that part in his book and I just thought <laughs> he didn't cover it. Yeah. But it is, it, it is yeah. funny though that they say he, it just says eternal father, not the eternal father. Is that what it says? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no definitive article adjective. It, it just says it just says mighty God, eternal father, you know, you know prince of peace. There's no the. Mm-hmm. That gives support to the whole thing of, well, eternal father, is the, it means the father of Israel, not, you know, the father, father. So you have two fathers. Okay. So you know, if you if you take out the the primitive yeah, article, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say because because you, you got people again running around saying he's the father. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, the new versions, you know, basically. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, go ahead and move on. I think you're lagging there, brother. Am I? Yeah, for for a second you were. Hmm, okay. I, I think we're good now, um, but yeah, like yeah, like you're just saying that, like I because you got all these people like because the, the two things I hear with that like you say is they will either say he he's the father of Israel like well then there's two fathers or then I I, I love this one because I've heard this one a few times um, so say where it says it says he is or it says he's called it doesn't mean he is the father it's like it's like mm-hmm. okay you know. <laughs> But then he goes on um, with Acts twenty twenty eight. He can't answer that one. He he you know beats around the bush on that one. He uh, can't answer First John five twenty. He beats around that one. Which which again that one changes changes the word to where it says. And we know the Son of God has come, where the kingdom says is come because again is come is a present tense because he's eternal. The Son mm-hmm. has always existed eternally. He wasn't created. He didn't you know whatever because because again for those who don't know within the trinity there there's two basic streams there's a thing called there's a thing called eternal sonship and there's a thing called incarnational um which is a whole different thing there if we if someone asks that question later we can discuss it but that's a whole different thing there um but the point is the son is eternal he's always existed jesus christ is come in the flesh that is present tense that it all and it, will, and it will work any point in time has come points to a point when he had to have, had to have been created or wasn't this wasn't the son or whatever Mm-hmm. So anyone that denies that, they're just yeah. Um, um, so then he gets into page eight, it's still the same chapter, page 83 and 84. Um, he then gets uh finished quoting Colossians 2 8 9, which again are butchered to death in the new versions, um, to get away from the Godhead. I mean, again, the new versions even take out the word Godhead, which he then explains. He says, verse eight or uh, page 83, excuse me, he says, um, why is Christ the standard? Why is he why is he worthy to be the benchmark by which everything else is to be measured? Because the fullness of deity dwells in him. That's what that's how they render Colossians 2 9. They, they they just say, Well, see, the deity was in him. You know, it's not it's not that he's the Godhead, you know, bodily, you know, it's all physically one man there. You know, no, no, it's just it's just that, you know, because again, the word took on flesh type of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he continues by saying, Each word is is full of meaning. When we read the fullness of deity. We find here a claim to the deity of Christ that is, in some respects, stronger than if Paul had used the very word God of of the Lord in this passage. Why? Because the word itself is very strong. Then he says this. The King James Version renders it Godhead, and he actually has Godhead lowercase, um, which I thought was interesting. Uh But he he says here, which is not only ambiguous, but since the the KJV also renders other less strong terms by the same word, E.g. Romans 120, it can be quite confusing. Folks, there is nothing confusing about the word Godhead. I said it earlier. It's a, it, it is a compound word of two God or two words. He's God and head. He is called God. We can go through and tons of scriptures proving that. And again, God by scripture definition means he is the father, not some triangle where he, you know, where it like he said it like 
James White's talking about earlier. God means he is the father. And we can run the references if, if, if someone questions that. But the mm-hmm. point is, he's called God. And he is the head of all things. He is the head of the body, the church. And there's so many scriptures you can give that. He is the head, you know, the, you know, all those different things. And so then that, that, that's why he can be, that's why he can be said who is overall God blessed forever. He's the head of all things. He, you know, he's King, Kings, Lord of Lords, the blessed and only potentate. Mm-hmm. And, catch, and get people catch that word only potentate. They'll say, they'll tell you that the Trinity co-equal all this other stuff that they're all omnipresent they're all omniscient they're all uh, they're all omnipotent well speaking of jesus he's the only potentate Mm -hmm. only what do you do with the father and the spirit then yep yeah and by him by him all things can so how does that work exactly exactly the father and the holy spirit on life Um, apparently you know yeah (laughs) Am I still lagging yeah, a little bit? Holding each other's hands, you know, or something like. Ah, uh, here, there, but you're, 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 I think you're okay. Okay. Um, we're gonna jump a little bit ahead here. He says some other things in here, but um, for the sake of time, with not really worth bringing it up. It's just the symbol Trinitarian stuff. Um, that we've all been accustomed to. Page 125, this is now, he's talking about what is called the Carmen Christi, which is the, um, which is, it's it's the scholarly term for what they try to, it's what they call Philippians 2, of Philippians 2, 5 through 11, and they try to say that, that was some ancient hymn and all this other stuff. It's, it's all that scholarly stuff they say. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, um, they get into the thing where it talk again, where it talks about, you know, who being in the form of God thought not Robbie to be equal with God and took upon himself the form of a servant, you know, you know, he, you know, you know, you know, all, all the different, I'm, I'm just calling from memory, all those different things there. So then he gets into this and then he, and so then he starts quoting all these different versions of it and, um, and whatever else. Um, Cause this is another trouble passage. Then he says here, and I thought this was funny, bottom of one page 25. He says here, uh, so it is here. The King James version does an excellent job by rendering it made himself of no reputation. So now he's actually praising the King James this time. Um, he says here, uh, Paul is not saying Jesus ceased to be God or in any other way stopped being equal with the Father, but that he voluntarily laid aside the privileges that were his. When the Lord walked this earth, men did not see him as a glorious heavenly being, for his glory was hidden, veiled. With the single exception of, of the Mount of Transfiguration, where a few chosen few saw him in his true glory, which is, again, I have a study on that on my channel. Uh, mm-hmm. That's not some theophany. That is that is exactly who God is, you know. But like I said, that's a whole different thing there. Check it out if you want to. Uh, the rest of, the, of mankind looked upon him who, as Isaiah had said, has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to, Isaiah 53, verse 2 in the New American Standard. Um, and then uh, what else does he say? Just, uh, so that's really what I wanted to say there. Um, we could cover more. Um Page 129, we're still talking about the supposed common Christie here. Page 129, on the bottom of this page, he says here in context, uh, he, he, he's referring to Isaiah uh, 45, verse 23, which talks about how people, everyone's have to bow the knee to, to God the Father, you know, Jehovah, as it's called in the Old Testament. Well, it gets quoted again in the New Testament twice, and it's quoted again in Philippians 2, you know, where every knee shall bow at, you know, at the name at, at the at every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. just paraphrasing. But he says here, in context, this passage is specifically about Yahweh, which that's what they, they, they all they all they all get rid of Jehovah and they turn it to Yahweh. Yeah, uh, whole thing there. Um, which is a, just a side note thing, you know, because there's a thing and it's a, a, another big old scholarly term uh, of which they call the tetragrammaton, which is how you're supposed to say God. OK, tetra three, you know, Jehovah three, Yahweh, that's two, you know, just so, you know. OK, yeah, uh, we'll, just, we'll just not pay attention. Um, mm-hmm. We're just, the, you know, we're just a bunch of dumb and, you know, Trinitarians. We'll just keep our mouth shut, you know. Yeah, but anyway, he continues. Yet Paul quotes from this passage and and says that it, it is to Jesus that every knee, knee shall bow. When when in Isaiah it is to Yahweh, to the glory of of God the Father. How can Paul say this? Does he believe in more than one God? Certainly not. 
but he real but he re- but he realizes that both father and the son are worthy of of the name Yahweh. <laughs> to bow the knee to the son, Jesus is to bow to Yahweh. <laughs> to do so in to do so is no way to slight the father who, like the son, shares the one the one divine name Yahweh. The glorification of the son results in the glorification of the father as well. Perfect balance, perfect consistency with with the etern- the entirety of divine revelation. You know, and the funny thing is. He and he and I put I put a, a side note of that because he does he doesn't talk about this. It's called the third time, you know, three. It's called the third time in Romans chapter fourteen, where to, and the, the context is, is referring to the judgment seat of Christ, and Christ and God are switched around. But he's quote, but Paul's quoting from that passage. That's what's the same being because again, if you understand the thing of the the Godhead, body, soul, and spirit, Jesus being the body, the Father being the soul, Holy Spirit being, Holy spirit being the spirit. When you're bowing to the knee to the knee, knee of Jesus, you can claim that you're bowing to both to the Son and the Father because it's all one being. So you could you can very easily claim that and say that I'm bowing to both. So it's not any contradiction. It's not because again, because again, you, uh, you get those pictures of people they they have the Father and the Son like set people sitting on on a throne together. Or there's like separate, completely separate thrones. Or there'll be like one throne. They'll have them two, two you know. You can look those pictures up. It's absurd, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially especially when, when you read read in, read in Revelation and, and the Old Testament, but especially in Revelation, there's only one throne mentioned and only one person sitting on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and and while we're on that subject, the thing of the you know the Father and the Son being there at the same time, body and soul, that that's again this this whole modalist thing that they're basically saying Father and Son can never be there separate. You know, it has to just be he's shifting modes. Uh, right. That doesn't work either. Right. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Because, you know, no, they, 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 we get this thing. Oh, you're modalist. You're modalist. If you don't, if you deny the Trinity, you're a modalist. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't work that way. No. If we have time, we can discuss if we want later or not. That's up, up to you. But I mean, like I said, and like you said earlier, we're not modalist. And I have books and study Bibles by real one of the Pentecostals straight from UPCI. Believe you me, we ain't modalist, okay? No, they, they I, we, we, we've discussed it. They teach some very heretical things, stuff that's just incredibly blasphemous. What mm-hmm. they what they say, um, like I said, if that comes up, we'll talk about it later. Um, so just a few more here, um, like and like a lot, a lot of this again is just um, the typical Trinitarian stuff, so that's there's no point in just reading it. Um, uh, but he goes on here, and then, um, let's see. Uh, my notes here. Um, well, I think I skipped one. Um, oh, here's one. Um, this is page 158. This is where he's talking about, again. He's talking about the three persons working with each other, kind of thing. He says here, um, middle of the page and page 158. Some insist that when Jesus says, "He he who has seen me has seen the Father." This is saying uh, this is the same as saying I am the Father, but this ignores the very words that that follow, where the where the Lord distinguishes Himself from the Father by saying the Father abides in Him, and does His and, and does His the Father's works through Him. Well, that doesn't disprove anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, the, the truth that Jesus teaches here, however, does does fully support the deity of Christ. For no mere creature could ever say, "He who has seen me has seen the Father." Jesus' words here do not make him the Father, but they do tell us that the unity that exists be- between the Father and the Son is, is far more than a mere unity of purpose or intention. The Son reveals the Father, or to use the words of John himself, he has explained him, John 1.18. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and, and he goes on, you know, and, and like he, he, uh, he, he discusses John 10, you know, that one. It gets all philosophical that one too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, we'll cover more. Then then uh, he 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 quotes someone else here. Then he, he actually quotes a guy named Dr. Lewis Burkhoff in his book uh, in his book Systematic Theology, and he and he and he covers these six different points that this guy brings up, and he starts and and again this guy again it's the same old he's repeating the same old stuff but it's just ridiculous what he says. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, he says, uh, uh, so he so he lets this guy, Mr. Burkoff, whatever is, yeah, Burkoff. 
he lays out six different points. The first point is that is, is this in the Trinity, there is no divine being, but one indivisible essence. Um, uh, he says here, this is foundation one monotheism. Um, I'm just kind of skipping around here. Uh, it makes a further statement. The divine being is indivisible. Um, that is, you can't chop up. I'm sorry. That, that is, you can't chop God up into parts. He is simple in the sense that he is <clears throat> in the sense that he's not made up of different parts. God is God's being is either entire whole or it is not God's being at all. Um, he continues on the second page here. Then he covers the second point, which the second point is in this one divine being, there are three persons or individual substances, father, son, and spirit, or Holy spirit. As is, I'm saying different. See, they're all spirit, separate spirit type of things. Bible says there's one spirit people. There's just one. Mm -hmm. it, you can't, you cannot get around that. Yeah. And so, yeah. So by denying that you are literally denying that it's, because I I just thought of this off the top of my head because you've talked about this and your thing about the you know the, the whole satanic trinity. Mm -hmm. I think in Revelation 16, 13, I believe it is, the three unclean spirits come out of the, the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. Very good. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Three different right. spirits and all, and here they come. Mm -hmm. hmm. That people, this is not an accident. <laughs> you know, this is what they're saying. They they are they are little antichrist. And that's what they're teaching. They're getting people prepped and ready for it. Yeah. And James White with his body art showing his uh, oh. <laughs> Christ or whatever else like this. Yeah. Chapter and verse on that. You know, get a tattoo that says that, you know, you know, God owns me. It's my tribe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but continuing, this is all uh, this is Mr. Burkhoff speaking here from his his his, uh, his uh, systematic theology. He says here, quote, this is foundation two. We know that the fact, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We note the fact that another term is offered to help define the word person, that being substances. So the C's that they're doing, they're changing person to mean, it only means substance now, which is those, which is the spirit thing. Um, why suggest this term? Because we are, I'm sorry, because we are, I'm because we are want to read and I don't, I don't, I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was a typo or if that, or if that's just how we spoke. I don't know, but, uh, but anyway, but because we are want to read into the poem person, or I'm sorry, in, sorry, term person, all sorts of physical limitations that should not be thought of at all when speaking of the Trinity. Many people, when they hear of three persons, visualize three men standing side by side. Uh, that's what they draw. <laughs> <laughs> people that are um, saying, uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um he continues yet yet this is not at all what we are talking about when we speak of a of person but then again does but th then again but uh does a uh, um um substance mean anything to, to most of us what we are talking about are personal distinctions in the divine being see they, they that see they're changing words um we are talking about the i you he found in such passages as Matthew 3, where the Father speaks from heaven, the Son is being baptized, and the Spirit descends as a dove. So they're making it a physical dove. Sure. While trying to avoid the idea of separate individuals, we are speaking of the personal self-distinctions God has revealed to exist within the one indivisible divine essence. Theologians speak of each of these substances as being marked by particular incommunic incommunicable attributes. What we mean is that you are, or I'm sorry, what we mean is that you can tell the Father from the Son, the Son from the Spirit, by how they are related to each other and by what the actions they take in working out creation, salvation, etc. We will talk more about this below. Uh, for now, we emphasize the fact that the Father, Son, and Spirit are distinguished from one another, yet these distinctions do not lead to a division in the one being that is God. This leads to the next point, uh, which is the whole undivided essence of God belongs equal to each other of the three persons. And... We won't. Uh, we don't really. We won't cover any of that. Um, but he goes on there, and then uh, you know James White talks about the great Trinitarian passage of, of Matthew twenty eight verse nineteen. That that is one of their their go tos without fail, because again, if you understand Catholicism too, the way they baptize people, they they that and that is their form that they set up. Mm -hmm. if, you know, and and through through the the councils that they set up, like you Council of Nicaea and Constantinople. That was the way you had, you had to baptize. It had to be done because, again, those guys believed in baptismal regeneration. It had to be done in the name of the Father and the, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the point is in this, and again, this is something we have to be clear about. Again, 
obviously we're not modalist. Not at all. And I, again, we can show the quotes were, were what they're saying, but they do make an, they do make a good point in saying though. And then the book of acts, you'll see this when every time they're baptized and it was only done in the name of Jesus, that's not an accident. And that's the thing. And that's, and, and, and again, 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 the whole baptism is, is salvation by baptism. Again, that the, the Pentecost teach wrong, totally wrong. I'm yeah. not saying, okay, let's be, let's be all clear in that. Mm -hmm. But you can't, but then the question is, okay, was those baptisms they, that, that they performed, were they wrong? Yeah. And, and no, they weren't. And now, and, 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 and now that being said though, again, you know, now, now to the modalist, because, because then, because then the modalist, you know, the one is Pentecostal, they would say it can only be done in the name of, well, no, Matthew 20, 19 exists it's there you can't get rid of that either you can do it both ways because it means the same thing you know yep so, you can do either one yeah it's yeah, legitimate right. yep but you know it's uh, because the uh the roman catholic uh i did a video on that a while back that they will consider your church to be legitimate but separated as long as you follow the trinitarian thing of father son and holy spirit in baptism you know yeah. if you don't do that then you're not legitimate for the Catholic Church, and uh, so then he we're, we're almost done here. But then uh, he goes on to actually quote some you know church fathers and a, and a lot of these quotes I'm looking at like they don't even prove the Trinity like the, like all, like the, he literally just went through and found these quotes where where, where the person mentions all three uh, you know the things of the Godhead and and they have all in one quote. So you go see look he shows the good distinction between and he didn't even prove anything with them. As a matter of fact, the quote if you actually look at the quotes. It, it could be kind of spin in our direction and I, I'm not going to get into this the whole the detail but and I because I, I have and we can cover this later if you want I have uh Tortullians against Praxius his famous book where he was you know, where he laid out the Trinity back in uh, around like 180 AD and he actually admits in here that he's not the majority you know and a, and actually and, and and the supposed oneness view, was mm -hmm. and now again this is heretical and believe you me and and like i said we can get into this later um because again like, like i said because like I said, a lot the oneness people believe me they're w way off you know but and but i and i can again you know again you know they're, they're, they're works of men so i take them with a grain of salt but it is interesting to look though because there are writings and i have the quotes where you can look at their quotes where they're saying the same thing we are you know and that's why they don't quote those guys. <laughs> mm. You know, they'll canonize them, give them sainthood. They'll put the halo over their head just because they have to, you know, you know, because see, they're members of the yearly church kind of type of thing, <laughs> but they'll, they'll, they'll never quote them for good reason. You know? Yeah. Um, and then that's, that's really about it. That's really all I would, what I really wanted to show. He gets into the whole thing, a bunch of footnotes he has at the end. But yeah, this book, like I said, it's absolutely heretical. And believe me, there's other stuff we could talk about. Um, but I just I tried hitting the I tried hitting the big ones. Um, so yeah, then like I said, if you have the first edition, it's the same thing. It's just only this one has cleaner formatting, uh, and, and and all the charts have been redone. That's that's basically it. that's all you're getting. Um, and you, all you know, and also actually added typos <laughs> that weren't the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just crazy, unreal, and just a bit, bit of a side note. We won't get into it, um, but because uh, I have another book put up by Walter Martin, uh, who is known as the Bible Answer Man. Um, he has his famous book that he has his famous book called The King of the Cults. He's been he's put the book out several times. Well, this one he has a, a thing called the the Handbook that just came out. It literally came out like several weeks ago. I bought it, and, and it's also inter interesting enough. He also is reformed, just like James White, and it's also produced by the same. Um, company Bethany House, and like I said, we won't get into it unless you want to. But some of the stuff he says in here, you know, of what of what his definition of a cult is, I can, we we because I was showing this, you, uh, some of this to you, Brian. We could sit there and just 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 shred James White's book apart with, with the stuff his buddy says over here of, of what defines a cult. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. And so, by the way, so, a, so if you want to continue yeah. something else, I, I just want to say this to everybody out there um, in case you don't know, because I see a lot of people asking, you know, what's brother JT's channel here. Um, you know, could you provide a link to it? And people are doing that in the comments. Thank you for taking care of that. But um, 
uh, brother Jacob here has been researching this issue for a little bit, about a year, I guess. It's basically a year of full on. I've been doing this project. Yeah. And he's going to be writing a book in the future, you know, here next within the next couple of months. He's, he's kind of finishing up his research and whatever else. He's going to be bringing out a, a really uh, well-documented book on this issue. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very sensitive issue in the spiritual realm. So I'll just say this for brother Jacob in, in, for him, for his case there, whatever, please pray for him because there's a lot of spiritual attacks that happen when you're writing a book or making a really hardcore video or whatever else. So to everybody out there watching, you know, please pray for brother Jacob as he's going through this process Thank you. and uh, let's, let's, you know, support him, you know, with this project that he's doing. So lift him up in prayer. Well, thank you, brother. Because I, I can, because I, like I said, we've, I've talked to you and other brothers about this. I mean, yeah, I've been getting a lot of spiritual attacks, the, the distractions like crazy with just people popping up in my life and trying to drag me away. And then just from family to the, and just my flesh just acting up, just depression, weird nightmares, you name it, just you name it, you know? Um, so like I said, all your prayers greatly appreciated. Um, so thank you. Yeah. So what are we, what are we going to talk about next? Well, um, I'll, I'll leave it up to you because I got I, I have a bunch of stuff we could talk about. Um, we do have that stuff by that um, Casaro fellow. I don't know if you want to talk about talk mm -hmm. about him. I have I have some stuff by Tertullian. If you want to talk about that and or other books, we can get into modalism. I'll leave it up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's briefly mention the Richard Casaro thing. Okay. Um, there, this is some interesting stuff and. Uh, I remember hearing uh, Bill Schneblin said years ago, and I have major issues with him. So I'm not recommending Bill Schneblin, William J. Schneblin from Chick Publications. He, they produce his books and whatever, a lot of his stuff. But he made a very good uh, thing about the statement about the occult. And he said the occult is like an onion. It's got multiple layers. And the deeper you go, the more it stinks, you know. And that's, that's a good way to say it. Um, this Richard Cassaro guy is exposing the Trinity, but he's a Mason. He's a Freemason. Um, there's a video out there, uh, a lodge in Erie, Pennsylvania, that they actually had Richard Cassaro come and speak, and they called him Brother Cassaro. That's he's a Mason, and right. he addressed. Well, I'll, I'll say, brother, not to, to your point, because I was looking into this a little more. Um, yeah. Just before we started, I did look. Yeah, he yeah he is definitely a Mason. He's been and he's on radio Mason radio talk show host. And what his thing is, for what I, I get, don't don't quote me on this, anyone. I'm not entirely sure of this, but for what I it appears as if that he's almost like trying to like reform it in a, in a weird way, where 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 it's like he's a Mason, but he sees this stuff and he's saying, "Well, see, we we need to expose this and get you know and and and, and do a cleansing of." masonry or something don't quote me on that but that's what it appears what I, i've been seeing mm -hmm. uh, that being said though i have two books for him one's an ebook um which I, i'm not really prepared to screen share but we i can do that if you want to but I, I got a book and i was me and brian were talking about this the other day um i got a book by him called uh, written in stone this thing is heavily documented it's decoding the secret masonic religion and because his thing is he tries to say because that the, the masonry goes way way back and it's it's this ancient you know you know whatever uh -huh. but anyway um he gets into a lot of a lot of good research into the whole thing of the trinity thing and like as we've said the trinity thing it, it goes as far back as to ancient babylon they had the ancient trinity of 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 of, of uh, Nimrod, Semiramis, and Baal. Is that how it goes? Essentially. I mean, it's, it's with, with the Trinit Trinitarian thing, you basically have three different gods and then a goddess that's kind of there as the mediatrix between the Trinity and man, you know. And, and that's the thing that when you start studying out the pagan cultures, you're going to see that. They're all doing it all over the world. They, every single little culture, they've got their little triad type of God and their structures. I'm going to show you some pictures here. Definitive proof, they, their structures, they're all doing the same thing. And that is not an accident. For example, you can see here, um, this is just a couple pages in, um, they're, they're, they, these pyramids, they all have a three-door type of system going on. 
Uh-huh. You know, Mexico, Egypt, Southeast Asia, India. That's not an accident. You see those structures. Even the paint, the famous painting of Jesus got the three door thing in there. Yeah, the Last Supper. Yeah. Then you look over here, Skull and Bones, the Freemasons, the Shriners. They've got a three door system going on. Mm-hmm. They're all it, and it just it, I mean it keeps going and going. You look at these cathedrals; they're doing it. Um. Let's see here. Um, like, like I said, this thing is heavily documented. And like I said, some of the points he, he goes off on is, okay, you know, not, you're obviously stupid, but yeah, there are some good stuff in here that are, again, you, you can't deny this stuff. Um, again, even here in, in, here in America, all these buildings that have the triad thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, buildings, all, again, you know, all these Masonic temples and other buildings across America. Yep. They're all doing it. And I'll, and I'll just say this. Look for it in your local area. You will be shocked. Oh, yes. I mean, we we driving around here. Two Masonic lodges are like it. Multiple church buildings. Three doors. Three are just very prominent. Kind of funny. There's an actually a really old uh, Baptist church in one town here. And uh, it's got it just a couple different times. On the front, on the side, it's got the three, three, three. I just thought, well, there you go. So much for the Baptist church. And here's what gets even interesting too. He shows a thing e- even in Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. They're doing it. The Nazis were into the, the, the occult. They were open Catholics. They made deals with the Pope. It's uh, no, no question. There's pictures of it. Mm-hmm. You know. Can't get around that one. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to keep this quick. I'm trying to show all the, some of these pictures. Um, let's see here. Um, Um, you know, he gets into like the like these guys that have like the third eye type of thing. You you see this a lot in Eastern religions. They have like the third eye, which if you can which if you connect them all, they create a triangle, and that's and and that which is what a lot of these religions teach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you get the Catholic the thing where they're doing the Father, Son, okay. Holy Spirit thing. They're crossing themselves. They're basically making a triangle. Mm-hmm. Um. Like I said, there, there's a ton of stuff you could show, but I'm just trying to find the quick ones. Because, um, I mean, he, he does go over some of this information again uh, several times. Um, and like I said, some of the points he makes, okay, they're way off in left field. I will say that. Um, just because, again, he's not saved. I mean, just mm-hmm. as simple as that. Yeah. But, but you still can't deny a lot of what he's showing here. Um Again, here again, he, then he gets actually gets into the into the Trinity thing more. You know, he shows how again, like the, all these different layers are going on in the, in the, in the basilicas are going on there. Mm-hmm. And then and then he actually shows. Um, oh, here's some more. Again, the more of these things going on there, right? The, the triad thing going on. He gets into in, in, in the floor de lis, which is interesting because that's the symbol of the Jesuits. Interestingly enough, yep. You know. Um, continuing here. Um, and then he gets into this. All these ancient Trinity deities that that existed all over Europe. Here's a here's a map of them, and all the symbols that go along with them. See, this Trinity thing is nothing new, people. It's just you look at them. The, these are not an accident, you know. And they're and they're right there and right there. There's the one Celtic knot or the Celtic knot that I'm covering up now. The Celtic knot that <laughs> that uh, James White had in his book. You know, all these different things there. Um, he gets again more more of these arches. You know, you know, you know Constantine, August, you know Augustus, you know, um, more of them over here. You know, the actual Trinity symbol. You know, the shamrock stuff. They again, because that one you see in Catholicism a lot. Um, which, which was made famous by by, by a Catholic scholar named Carl Barth, because he tried to use that to explain the Trinity. See, you know, each thing there, you know, each part of the clover, you know, um, is a different person, which is absurd. Which is absurd. And if you find a four leaf clover, you have to put Mary in it, I guess. All right. <laughs> 
So just all these different symbol symbols that show up and where they come from. And um, I mean, it's just, this is all over the place, you know, you know, even the, this one temple, again, there's still a triad thing going on there in this temple in Peru, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's all over the world. Um, you just, you simply can't ignore it. And like I said, I have another book by him where he gets, and he actually shows a lot of these different idols um, where they're all doing the same thing. Like they like, it's, it's like literally like the same idol. It's just, it's just the art interpretation changed a little bit throughout each culture, but it's the same thing, you know, you know, this is to this day the the big one, and there's two little smaller ones. You know, yeah. Um, you know, because this is over, I think China, I believe. And um, continuing here, um, and you know, the whole thing is, you know, the the people say that about the Antichrist. A couple more there. People say about the Antichrist, you know, there's this, been this false teaching which been which has been put out there. They say that the, he's going to be a new age Christ and he'll be he'll be God to, you know, to the Muslims. He'll be, you know, a certain Imam Mahdi or something. Yeah, you can see that one, too. And to the Catholics, he'll be this to the to the Buddhists, he'll be that and whatever else. You know, he's going to be God to each person. No, he's going to be the Trinity. And it's going to be all these ancient cultures that have worshipped the Trinity. Yeah. You know, and people are going to realize, hey, it's the Trinity that, that unites all the lost people. Yeah. And, he, you know, he can, the Antichrist can go to any of those temples, any of those places, you know, and it's all going to be people saying, wow, that's our God. That's the one we've been looking for. Yep. Just incredible. I mean, it's, it, it it's, been going. <laughs> it's been going on for thousands of years. You know, it's, it's insane. Yeah. It's just all over the world, all these different religions, they're all doing it. All doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is it's just not you all you have to do is just look at the evidence. And I thought this was funny. Here's a picture of Buddha. He's got a, a three head thing. Mm -hmm. If you see so if you look up the Trinity to type it online, you'll see pictures where they have Jesus, you know, you know, their idea of Jesus doing the same thing. Yeah. You know. Um like I said, it just goes on and on with the evidence he shows here. Um, I'll show a few more, and then we'll be done with this one. Um, um, <laughs> you know, he gets into this, you know, even like there, you know, you know, you know, there's like three lions, you know, like like three lion heads, you know, India and Egypt doing it, and. Mm -hmm. Um. And you see the the Egyptian thing. You have two, you know, two eyes, and then one center, one center, one big center eye. Um, mm -hmm. um, you see, like they're, they're these lotus drawings. They're doing it, you know, but with their their own symbologies. Um, just a few more here, and I'll be done. Um, yeah. He shows it, you know, kind of some of the stuff going on here. You know, these diff the different Egyptian things going on. Yep. Uh, I think we're pretty much done here. Oh, and there's even some symbols again. We've been saying it's going to come from Babylon. Well, here you go. Here's a symbol, and and uh, this you see in Babylon, and you see these other gods. They're doing the same thing. And 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 the, this book, I I don't have in paperback copy. It's an ebook, but I was showing Brian this. Just pages upon pages upon pages of those pagan gods that are they're doing the same thing. It's this one guy holding up like these two like snake looking things, you know. Mm -hmm. It came from Babylon. It's. It's just, it's just people. It's just, it's just where it came from. You can't get around this stuff, you know. Yeah. It just, you know, you just, you scratch your head after a while. You just think, man. See if I can do this real quick. Let me see if I can share my screen. Okay. Um, oh, hold on a second. I'll share this one here. You see this picture right here? First Baptist Church. 
That counts the church. One, <laughs> two, three. Okay. That's a coincidence. Again, we're looking at coincidence here. Just a coincidence. Inside, one, two, three. <sighs> this is funny. Nothing to it. You know, that, come on now. This, but then it just goes on and on and on. Just all yeah. their architecture, their gods, they're all doing it. I mean, you, you can't deny this stuff after a while. It's all right here. Um. Just a few more, and uh, I thought this is kind of I mean, this is kind of interesting. There's a thing of this god called Tumis, which uh, which uh, which uh, I've never I've never read the, I, the what's it what's what's the book, Brian? Narnia. Yeah, yeah, I haven't read that, but I thought that, but I, I am familiar with some of the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little satyr named Mister Tumis. We read it when you know my parents read it to me when you know we were children because oh, it's a Christian you know story. It's an allegory about you know. Jesus and all this other stuff. No, it isn't. You're right. Yeah. It's just it just goes on and on, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and again, they even show how they how the minds they did they did their observance thing. They had like, you know three stations in which they do it, you know, in their temples. Huh. Um. I think that's just about it. Um, yeah, and then and then again, he shows how the, again, like the, these words, staff gods, they're all kind of doing the same thing. This is what this is what the other book I was showing I was showing you, Brian. This is, it gets into some of this more of, but he he does show a little of this in this one. Yeah. Um, which I thought was interesting. Again, here's a pagan idol of of Ishtar, which we know again to be Babylonian, and all these other gods. Hey, they're all doing the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It came from Babylon, people. That's where it's where it came from. They're all doing the same thing. That's where it came from. Yeah. You know, same thing again. The thing of uh, the you know the god of Gilgamesh. That's Babylonian. They're doing it. Mm -hmm. It's Babylonian. The whole thing Babylonian. All these gods come from Babylon. That's where it all started. And each one just put their spin on it. So I mean, it's just like I said, just goes on and on with the temple architecture and. Yeah, and the, you know, the masons and stuff like that it just continues on and on. Mm -hmm. Yep. And like I said, look for it in your own town. As you're driving yep. around, look for it. You'll see it everywhere. It is so weird. You just realize, wow. Yeah. It's just creepy stuff. So we'll we'll stop there on that. But yeah, there's just a lot of good information here. And like I said, the guy's not saved. He's off in some areas, obviously. So you have to just you know weed through those. But the point is you can't you can't duck. The other stuff you're showing, you just can't. Mm -hmm. Man, well, um, could, you said about the, some of the Tertullian stuff there. Do you want to read some okay. of that? Okay, we'll briefly get into this. Um, haven't finished it, um, but I've I've read some of it already. And um, and now, now here's the thing: if you don't know the thing here, again, this is written roughly around 180 AD, um, roughly here. Um. And again, uh, Tertullian is the one these guys quote a lot because he was the first one to coin the term Trinity. Um, so they use him a lot. And in and, and this book, Against Praxius, uh, is, is actually a letter he wrote um, against, again, a man named Praxius. Now, the thing about modalism, there are three big names in modalism, you know, you, you know, going, you know, some, you know, supposed modalists, I should say, when you, when you dig into the history, there's three of them. Praxis is one of them. The other one is Notius, and then the big one is Sibelius, which is where the term Sibelianism comes from. Mm -hmm. um, Sibelius came a little, little later. But Praxius um, got this guy, and again, like I said, we're not modalists. We don't believe we don't believe in it. We don't affirm it whatsoever. They're heretical. Uh, but what's interesting, though, the writings of Praxius, Notius, and Sibelius—they don't exist. They're gone. You know. So we really don't know what exactly they taught. All we can go by is what was 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 what people like him and you know, like, like Tertullian said, like what what Athanasius was saying. You know, what I mean, all we can really go by is what we said. So, and, and let me say, let me say this very clearly again: if some of the stuff again, if 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 what some of the stuff they claim is true, then yes, they were heretical. 
you know, the, the morals I'm saying. If, it's, if, if that's what they said, if that's what they actually said, okay. But that being said, knowing Trent Terrans, though, we, you, not you and me, Ryan, we know full good and well, they'll lie and just twist everything we say all the time. And you can explain a thousand times over and say, no, I don't believe that. It don't matter. They'll, you know. Yeah. But according to Proc, according, this is what this Tertullian right now in chapter one of his writing, um, he says, he says here, uh, th- according to him, this is, this is what he claims Proxius taught. He says that the father himself came down into the virgin, was himself born of her, himself suffered, indeed was himself Jesus Christ. Well, here's the thing, though. Isaiah 9, 6, Jesus Christ is the father. God manifests in the flesh. You can't duck that. Now, that being said, obviously, again, the father, he himself did not suffer. The, son, the father wasn't killed. The son was. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, you can't kill the invisible God. <laughs> You can't, you can't, you know, so, I, so, I, so, so again, so again, if that's what they're saying, you know, the proxy said, okay, that's off. The father never physically suffered. Now, now he suffered in the sense of where he grieved. You can see those passages. Yes. But no, he was not physically nailed. He was not physically beaten. You know, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is what I, I thought. And like I said, I'm not going to go over everything. And like I said, I have not finished it, but because a lot of this is just, it's just the same old scholarly Step back then, where he's trying to get t- 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 all fancy with it, you know. But I thought this was interesting. I heard I heard this when I was first starting the research, and I thought this was crazy when I heard this. But I read it for myself. Here's what he says here. This is on page nine of this of this of this book, under chapter three of Tertullian's letter. Here, um, he refers to praxis as being as as being as being you know simple, you know, which is you know which is which is a, a derogatory you know term. Uh, but, he's, but, he, but he says here, the simple indeed, I will not call them unwise and unlearned, who always constitute the majority of believers, are styled at the dispensation of the three in one, on the ground that their very rule of faith withdraws them from the world from the world plurality of gods to the only one true God. Not understanding that although he's only one God, he must be believed with his own whatever Greek word there. I'm pre- I think it means hypostasis, I think, but... But you can see, though, he's admitting that the praxis here would be in the majority. Hmm. Oh, you know. And yet, and, yet, and, 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 yet, and then yet, all they do is they, you get these trans they go right back to Tertullian. Yes, 180, 100 AD, the apostles and people, people are long dead. They're long gone. That's why, and again, if you look, if you look at church history, um, especially in, in terms of the Bible, Compare that with with the book of Revelation, chapters two and three. You know, I, I believe obviously those were literal seven churches there. You know, you know, literal seven church bodies. Um, but also, if you you can take that prophetically, you, and you can see how it lines up with church history, and f- what it started off with Ephesus, w- which was around w- which was around ninety A.D. when, when John wrote the book of Revelation. They were already starting to apostatize. You can see that because it's, because thou because it said Jesus said thou hast thou hast lost thy first love. Mm-hmm. They were already starting to fall off because the apostles they're pretty much all dead now except John, and the, and the people that knew him they were still carrying out you know the you know what they were saying, and they were getting martyred like crazy you know and you know, again people like Polycarp and again and uh, uh, um, um, uh, Irenaeus and all the, uh, the different guys again there works some men. I don't, I don't count them as scripture. I kind of just go, okay, whatever, because, because that's, that's, because again, they're not, they're not inspired. And so, and so again, there are, there are multiple translations of their writings that the ones that we have, because some Catholic will translate this way. He'll translate that way. You know, the whole thing there. So again, you can only take this stuff with a grain of salt. However, though, I have seen some of the, some of the ways they've been translated and some of the ones I've seen the quotes were, I think it was Irenaeus who's, who he, I think in his writings to the uh, 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 Magnesians, I believe it was the you know, you know the you know the Magnesians he's writing. He actually outright explicitly called Jesus Christ the Spirit. He actually says Jesus Christ is the Spirit. He says it. Now, 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 whether or not he said that, like I said, I, I just say that just so just so I don't dogmatically say that's what he said, and and you know, and his writings are are, are on the level of Scripture. They're not. He's a work. The the works of men, and like I said, we don't know. And really, probably can't know because again, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the dead languages. I don't care what someone else said. I, I'm concerned with what the Bible says. But is it, it is interesting enough to, to see those quotes, and then you see Praxi or uh, uh, Tertullian still, you know, years later saying that he's he's in, you know, that 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 group is the majority. 
it's not an accident. They killed off all the real people, you know, and then, and then, we'll, and then, we'll, then what's left at those, at those councils? Cause again, people, they, they were teaching syncretism. That's nothing new. Syncretism is when you, is when you blend religions together. They took Roman paganism, which has their triad gods, mm -hmm. look them up, look into it. They had plenty of them. And then they just took Christian, you know, the Christian doctrines and they slapped them on there. And that's in document. That's why they have the statues of like Mary and you know, Peter and, all, and, you know, and all the other stuff. And they, they just kind of like redid them. And they said, see, look, no, see, this is the Virgin Mary and this is baby Jesus. This is Peter. This, you know, they mm -hmm. just did them all. And that's why too, again, people like Constantine, he still worshiped the sun when the doctrines were, when they were like pulling off the persecution and trying to get all these doctrines set up. He openly in his writings was still worshiping the sun. You know, his, his, his son got called soul, you know, you know, and a lot of these guys they brought in for these different councils, they were all philosophers and theologians. And they, that, that were like, they, they were taught to like train up and learn up the doctrines at this point. And all these apologists started, those guys were heretical. Those guys were just insane. Like even origin who came later, I think or roughly, I'm just guesstimating. It was like roughly 250 something AD kind of that ballpark area. I can show the quotes too. Where he's actually quoted as saying is actually calling Jesus the second God. What you know, and, then, and that's what the Trinitarian thing teaches because he is again those early church fathers, you know, church fathers, you know, when you actually when you when 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 you look at their writings, they actually refer to person as a body, soul, and a spirit. They taught a person literally. So when they were saying person, they were they they meant it literally. Three persons, you know, mm -hmm. and then it was. Oh, then later, as as the doctrine kept starting to get refined around around 380 in the council the council of Constantinople, and then later on the council uh, council of Ephesus 430 AD and onward, then they started to pull kind of pull back to a person really, you know, and kind of thing. And then you know, then later on, then you got people, you, you know, like Thomas Aquinas, so then like really fleshed it out, and then just on down the list. The point is though, that's interesting. Tertullian, the great Trinitarian, is claiming that. The supposed oneness people are the majority. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh boy. Um, now what do you want to do? You want to go over some of the uh, what modalists, the whole sure. thing, modalism, what they believe and, and teach? Sure, we can kind of. I think it's good just so we just so we can clarify why we're not modalists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get, I get. Grab Anytime, you know, people, people, uh, let me just type in my name, Brian Denlinger, modalist, and you'll see what we're talking about. <laughs> Denlinger's a modalist. All this stuff. I'm not a modalist. Never have been. Oh, but anyway, oh. just trying to, trying to find a couple. Um, we'll look at two sources here. I have, I have more. I have a couple ebooks as well. We'll just look at two quick ones. If you want a quick synopsis of what these guys believe, get this book right here. Essentials of Oneness Theology by David K. Bernard. David K. Bernard is, is the superintendent of UPCI. So this guy is the real deal. You want to know what a modalist, modalist teaches, they're going to tell you, okay? UPCI, and, uh, I can find it for people real quick. U, UPCI, stands for, uh, UPCI stands for United Pentecostal Church International. They are the one as Pentecostals. And they constitute, I think, what's it like, roughly, I think, like 25% of Pentecostals as a whole. So, I mean, not a lot, but, I mean, well, I mean, it is, but not, you know, not crazy numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but, but but it's enough to take note of, you know. But anyway, uh, he lays out, and it's, again, a very small little booklet. He just lays out what they kind of believe. And I won't touch on everything. But I will give you some of the quotes of what what how these guys define it. So he says um, here on page eight, he says the wondrous doctrine can be presented sequently in two propositions. So if you want a quick summary, here's what it is. First, number one, there is one indivisible God with no distinction of persons. Can we stop right there? Again, I agree. There's no persons. There's no multi, There's only one person. We can again the scripture for that. We can show. Mm -hmm. The problem is though, he is divisible. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And then and these three are one. Not three in one. These three are one. You know, I've made the mistake of saying three in one. That's what the Trinitarians say. No, it's three. These three are one. Yeah. Um. But that. But and that's the thing. They there there is division. There is a distinction of those things. Mm -hmm. you, you you can't duck that. 
Number two, he says, uh, Jesus Christ is all the fullness of the Godhead incarnate. And that'll be important here in a moment. I'll explain what they what, what they teach. All titles of the deity can be applied to him, and all aspects of the divine personality are manifest in him. He continues on after this, and he says here, and 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 what he calls it, what he calls it, refers to it as a as a, a radical monotheism is what he calls it. He says this the basis of oneness theology is a radical concept of monotheism. Simply stated, God is absolutely is absolutely and 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 uh, indivisibly one. So so as so as we're we're we are saying man is created the image of God by his own spirit, God is also three, you know, three, and they are one and very clearly distinct from one another. Mm -hmm. Whereas they're saying it's just one completely with you know just one you know um he said he says continuing there are there are no essential distinctions or divisions in, in his eternal nature all the names and titles of the of the deities such as elohim yahweh adonai father word and holy spirit refer to one and the same being or or in trinitarian terminology to one person and people say see you're modus no they deny distinction that's very key. And like, and like I said, they have a lot of stuff here that's heretical. I'll get that in a minute. Uh, he, he says that any plurality associated with God is only is only a plurality of attributes, titles, roles, manifestations, modes of activity. There's a modalism comes in or, or relationships to man. So so so, the, and so, and so that's where the head games come in. They people say, oh, oh they don't distinction. Well, they do of persons, but they they affirm distinction of they have different roles because they're switching modes. One minute he's going from father, one minute he's going from son, one minute he's spirit. One, you know, that's what's going on there. And so they cover some of the scriptures where they where the they they, they try to prove this, and then they and they try to deal with some of the child passages. One of these I thought was is hilarious. They try to deal with Genesis one twenty six because you have a, a legitimate problem in Genesis one twenty six if you're going to take this position. You know, let us you know make man in our image. Mm -hmm. And, and, and of course, of course, the Trinitarian people they can't figure that out either. Again, watch my start on the glory of the Lord. I cover what's going on there. I, I show the scripture to explain what's happening, um, explicitly. Yep. But anyway, he says here. He says there that the 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 use of the divine uh, what, what what they call what he calls here, um, the divine plural is what they call it. <laughs> uh, um, they they say let us make man our image can be viewed in several ways. Number one, God conversing with angels, as Jews explain. So, in other words, what he's saying there, he's saying when, when God's made that statement, he was talking to angels when he was doing it. So then you're implying the angels were in creation. But then but then if you but then if you say that, they say, oh no, not at all. Well, that statement doesn't work. Let us make man in our image. You you you, you don't you don't you don't look at someone and say, Hey, let's go make man in our image, but I'm but 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 you're not going, you know, I mean, come on, that doesn't make any sense. No. Yeah. And and the funny thing is too, they 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 stay put in parentheses as Jews explain. Well, they don't no quote no nothing. I don't and it's because I I have this I have this study Bible here, it, that uh, right here it's called the Premier Study Bible. It just came out last year, purely oneness. And they 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 say the same thing. They they, they talk about they talk about all all these Jewish sages that say that yet they don't offer any proof. Like like who says that? Like which which if they do whatever fine, but they don't give the quote for it. But he continues on here. They got, for other reasons, they say God counts him with his own will. That's in Ephesians 1 11. Number three, plural pronoun simply agreeing with, with the pronoun Elohim. Number four, a majestic or literal plural. Um, number five, a prophetic reference to the future manifestation of the Son of God. Um, significantly in fulfilling this verse, God created Adam as one person with one body, mind, person, personality, spirit, and will. Um, and then, then he says this, and then this is key because remember earlier he said he said Jesus Christ is the fullness that God had incarnate. He says this here in page nine, references to the Son are prophetic of the man Christ, point to God's future manifestation in the flesh. In other words, and and and, and we'll see the quotes here in, for this in a moment. What he teaches, what what these guys teach, they say the Son is outright created. Okay, what they say is that what they would say is that there is they would say that the Father. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me. They will say that that, that there is one spirit. They had they they will give the scriptures where it says there's one spirit, like we talked about earlier. That's true. But what they do is then then they make it the Father. So they so they say that one spirit is the Father. Then what they do is then they take the word, the capital W word, which is referring to Jesus Christ, who is the Son. They say the word 
you know, being, uh, being like, uh, what do they say? It, it's, it's that Greek word. Um, 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 but logos, whatever you said earlier, they wow. will say, they will say that is the thought mind will of God. And that, and, and the word is not the son, but then at the incarnation, then the Godhead of that one spirit then dwelt inside the son. So the son was outright created at the incarnation. And then that spirit who is father word, Holy spirit dwells inside of that body. Mm -hmm. that, that's what they teach. Yep. And then they do the thing of, uh, Jesus on in time and Jesus in eternity. Yep. Yeah, that, then they pull that whole thing off. Right. And the Father speaking out of heaven, that's Jesus out of heaven, out in eternity, speaking to Jesus in time. Right. <laughs> okay. No. And again, page 15 that they say they hear they say here the, the um talking about Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Um they say the title specifically refers to God's uh, for, I'm sorry, refers to God in, in activity, particularly his work. Um, and anointing, uh, and regenerating and indwelling man. Oneness therefore affirms mo the multiple roles and works described by the terms Father, Son, and Spirit. So again, just it's just it's just it, the, so the distinction is just roles. Um, again, for example, again, like I said, we, we've covered this stuff. Uh, this quote here, I've covered my son, the glory of the Lord. We covered that and the whole thing of, of how the Son is the body of Jehovah. What's going on here? But they say it, 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 concerning Re uh, Revelation five, they say the vision of the one on the throne, and the Lamb in, in Revelation five is is symbolic only. See, because again, they have a problem because then they have a problem because they don't because again, you got two people. Well, not not two people, but you know what I'm saying. That you got two, you got you got one on the throne, you got the Lamb showing up, and they say, and so then they go, oh, it's symbolic. No, it's not. It's not symbolic of anything. We we covered that in the one study of the how how the Son is the body. We mm -hmm. show the time what's what's actually going on there but that's like i said you can go check it out uh but, but he says the one on the throne he, he says here the one on the throne which is the father the one on the throne represents all the deity while the lamb represents um, i'm sorry while the ram while the ram, lamb if i can say it represents the son in his human sacrificial role so then that, that's the thing they only view the son as being a physical body that's the only that's what they believe in um uh so then again the page 19 he says here then the, then the role of the son will be submerged back into, into the greatness of god this is after everything is you know after everything's been accomplished uh who remain in his original role as father creator and rule of all and, and then they quote first Corinthians 15 28 which doesn't prove that um um then he says, same same page here, as father, Jesus sometimes acted and spoke from his divine self-consciousness. As son, he sometimes acted and spoke from his human self-consciousness. Um, so like I said, it like, go, go, goes on and on. Um, he says, to page 22, Jesus preexisted the, the incarnation, not as the eternal son, but as the eternal spirit of God. So again, we, we don't believe that. We don't believe that at all. Mm -mm. That's, that, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, and again, page 22, uh, where he, he refers to, he refers to the, lo the logos. He says the logos word of John one is not equivalent to the title son. One is theology as it is in Trinitarianism. Well, again, well, one in one uh, word and son do mean the same thing. Go read first John one, you know what that, that's what they've seen. They handled, they touched the word of life. Yeah. That's physical. It's, it's synonymous. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Again, or again, same thing in Revelation 19. He's coming back on the horse. His name is called the Word of God. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and so what they're saying is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, and, again, and again, too, again, John 1 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, so, you know, you know, so the thought and will was, you know, was, was with God. What kind of, that's kind of a weird statement to make, you know? Yeah. And then the thought and will is God. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, it doesn't work. But he says here on page 20, but it continues off of that quote here, son, the title son is limited to the incarnation, but logos is not. So what, so, 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 so they're saying here again, that thought, mind, will, the logos, the word has always existed, has always existed with the father, but then the son was then created at the incarnation. And then, and then that Godhead and dwelt the body, um, which, you know, ridiculous. Um, page 23, he continues the same thing. He says, he says, in the fullness of time, God put flesh on the logos. He expressed himself in flesh. Um, 
And there's other stuff we could talk about here, but we'll just continue on. But then he then he then then he gives con uh, some conclusions at the end. Um, he says this conclusion in 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 in, in, in if I, I can't speak now in con contra contradistinction. There we go to Trinitarianism. Oneness asserts that number one, God is indivisibly one in number with no distinction of persons. Well, again, we don't believe in persons, but they are very much distinct. There's three distinct <laughs> distinct things about them. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting, interesting enough because he there's a footnote where he where where, where he, he actually says first John 5 7 shouldn't be in the Bible. So there you go. Yeah, yeah they have to get around it, you know. Um, point number two, God's oneness is no mystery. Number three, Jesus is the absolute fullness of the Godhead. He is at once Elohim, Yahweh, Father, Son, and Spirit. Number four, the Son of God was begotten after the flesh and did, and did not exist from eternity past. The term only refers to God's incarnation in Christ. Number five, the word, the Logos word is not a separate person, but the mind, thought, plan, activity, or expression of the Father. You know, and they have a few other points there they go on to. But he, 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 I think you all could kind of get the general idea here where they're switching around, around modes. And, and see, the problem is, though, was what they're saying, the Son is in the incarnation. I can show you Old Testament references where he showed up right in front of them. Mm -hmm. you know, right in front of them. Which interesting, I'll, I'll, I won't quote too much from this, but this is kind of called it's called the Premier Study Bible. Ooh, you know, <laughs> um, um, it, um, it is it is a King James. Um, actually, one of the guys who worked on it, his name is Steve Waldron. If you type his name here on YouTube, he he has a he has a YouTube channel where he uh, he like he does a bunch of like reviews of Bibles and books and stuff like that. Um, hmm. but anyway, um, he again, so again, the whole thing's oneness. But anyway. He goes um, in the book of Daniel um, in the back here, which, again, it just shows they can't handle Scripture. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 24 and 25, I'll read the verse. It says, Then then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered, said unto the king, True, O king. He answered, said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. There he is. The Son of God showed up. Mm -hmm. Physical manifestation. Not a, again, again, not a theophany. Because again, in, in this book, he actually does say that he talks about theophanies because all because again, those bodily appearances, he he they they duck those and they say, oh, it's theophany, <laughs> you know, which mm -hmm. is insane. Yeah. But here, anyway, here's their footnote. I highlighted it. The footnote says down here, the Son of God could also be translated a Son of the Gods, <laughs> which is what the New Version say. Exactly. It is to be remembered that the pagan king who made the, this observation also called called this unknown one an angel in 328. Yeah, the angel of the Lord. <laughs> the physical manifestation that's God physically there. The angel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, he and it, it goes on there. But the point is, and, and the point is, it's funny too, because this guy actually, the guy who did it, Steve Waldron, actually claims to be a, a King James Bob leader. <laughs> He's like, no, you don't. You don't believe this book. No, you know, you corrected it. Yeah, and, and and there's other stuff too, like they'll, like like they'll tell you that the right hand of the father uh, means like it's like the power and authority he has. It's not distinction there. It, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just that he's he he's like the right hand man. He's the right you know. He just yeah. has the power and authority he's got you know. <laughs> so, like I said, we can go on and on. I have other books and quotes to show, but you, I think y'all kind of get the idea. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I guess we could do some question and answer type of stuff right now. Um, okay. We've pretty much covered it, I think, pretty good. Um, okay. Actually, on that note, I'm going to use the bathroom. <laughs> um, okay. Right back. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but while he's away, I just want to say a few things about James White. Um, you got to watch out for these guys like James White. Uh, they have no final authority in, in when it comes to the Bible. They do not believe for one minute that they can hold a perfect book in their hands and call it, you know, they'll call it God's word, but they don't really believe it. It's just a translation. And they, and then they go to the Greek and the Hebrew and all this other stuff. And uh, there's a lot of people like that. And, you know, being in ministry and things with different churches over the years, um, I met very few preachers that actually believe that they hold God's word, God's perfect word in their hands. They believe that that's some kind of a heretical, um, uh, thing or something it's blasphemy to say that you can you know this is god's perfect word guys it'll be you know say king james only we only use the king james bible here they don't want to call this book perfect uh and so 
that's one of the big things I've always stood for at this ministry here, King James Video Ministries. The King James Bible is perfect. It's God's perfect word. It judges you. It judges me. We don't judge it. Um, so you get a guy like, like James White. He'll stand up and he tries to call himself a Bible-believing Christian, but he is not. And my challenge to James White is simply hold up God's perfect word on camera and show it. He'll never do it. So I, I saw people in the comments and say, why don't you debate James White? Never going to happen. It's not worth my time, quite frankly. It's just, you know, he's not going to convert me. I'm not going to convert him. Both, you know, people that watch me will come away saying, Brian, you know, made him look foolish. James White's people will come along and say, he made me look foolish. And, you know, I've had offers for debates over the years with people, and, I, and I've never done one because it's just ridiculous. It's a waste of time. It's a pride thing. So that's just wanted to get that out there again. So, but anyhow, uh, we'll open up everything to questions here. If anybody has any questions to either Brother Jacob or to myself, go ahead and fire away. I'll just highlight this one here. Um, can I still donate on your GoFundMe, Brian? Yeah, it's it's still there. Um, you know, it's uh, we're we're still looking into the thing of getting a ministry office that's closer to our property. Uh, still praying about that, so we'll see. But yeah, that's the GoFundMe thing is still there. Just to answer that. Um, okay, in Luke seventeen ten is the word these or those correct? Um, look that up quick. This could be, you know, the, the difference between the Cambridge and the, the uh, Oxford edition. Um, Luke 17, 10. Um, so likewise, ye when ye shall have done all these, all, all those things, excuse me, which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't done that comparison. Quite frankly, I, I don't know. Um, there were differences between different printings of the Cambridge and the Oxford. Um, most of them are very, very minor. I tend to stick with the Cambridge type reading, but I'm not going to, you know, somebody has the Oxford, you know, edition of the King James are going to hell or something like that. No. Um, I don't know. You could do a study on that if you wanted to. Any question? Any other Questions here. Who who really are the Gentiles? You want to answer that one, brother? Not a Jew. <laughs> How, what, what did you say? I didn't get to what you said there. Not a Jew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically. Okay. Remember in one of your sermons, you talked about the fruit of the spirit and you explained that our flesh can copycat it. Can you elaborate on that further, please? Um, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of people that, um, let's go to Galatians chapter. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Again, such there is no law. Um, can lost people fake love? Yes. Can they fake joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance? Yes, they can. Um, There's a lot of people that can fake that stuff. Modern Christians are very, very much into that whole thing. Oh, I love you. Oh, I'm concerned. They're, they're gentle. You know, you're being militant if you attack the Trinity or something. Um, that's what I meant by that. The people can fake it, you know, so you have to watch out for that. Um, uh, here we have this one. How do you determine your nationality as a Christian on your dad's or side or mom's side? It gets into really sticky territory there. I'm not really going to get into that whole thing there. Um, I would say by your dad's side. But, you know, that that can be taken and twisted and all kinds of stuff. So 
uh, where's we both uh, comment, love you, brothers. I'll praise the Lord for you both doing this. I pray daily for both of you and especially JT as he works on another book. Amen, Thank brother. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, uh, things are going pretty quick here. <laughs> If you see any comments you want to answer, brother, you can go ahead and click on me. Okay. Brother John here. Um, question, do you all have any videos on the whole armor of God? No, I never did anything on that. Good question. Um, not that I'm against it. I just haven't done it. You know, actually, brother, to your question, I, I, I actually think, uh, brother Brian, in, in your video, um, your study on Ephesians 6, I think you, co you covered that years and years ago your, your expository of it mm, yeah but i don't think i did you know actually specifically on that question so that's good. Okay. No. um question can we pray for our enemies before closing this uh closing the live stream i guess is what you're saying yeah i guess we could <clears throat> uh jenny dobbins Question, Jacob, my children have enjoyed your KJV Bible game. Will you be making more cards for the New Testament? Yes. Um, there's a there's a, a big old thing around that just because that's been kind of put off hold because I've been doing all the all the book stuff. But at some point or other, I would like to actually go through and like just kind of like re, redo the whole thing, just fix up a few. Uh, because there's some typos in there that I am aware of, people have made, made me aware of, and there's some uh, some – just functionality i'd like to fix up but the point is yes i will be adding more questions um for it and so yeah I, once i do i'll be making announcements on that but just probably not for a while just because i got the book i want to get done sounds good question jt and brian do you have saved family members or is it just you go ahead brother no i don't got any sadly yeah it's uh um i wish but yeah, I have questions about some of my family members. Uh, most of them are lost, but there's a, you know, some I kind of think, uh, I don't know. Um, question, are Brian and Jacob familiar with Anthony Buzzard? If so, what do you think of his work? He's debated White on the Trinity and One. I've heard the name. Um, I might have actually seen, because I've seen a few of his uh, White's debates, and I might have watched it, but I can't I can't put a face to him. But I, I, I have heard the name, though. Okay, see that there, Brian. You should have received my letter on response and testimony in the next week or two, brother from Estonia. Thanks a lot for the studies on the topic I requested. Yeah, not a problem. Very interesting subject, the thing of Christian and privacy. Um, okay, question. Is the body of Christ spiritual Jews? When you get born again, you are adopted into the nation of Israel by spirit of adoption. Well, there's the spirit of adoption, but technically... We're not, you know, in Christ, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. We're not, we're all just one in Christ. So there's no distinction there. We, you know, you got to watch out for this type of teaching because, you know, you can come up with this whole replacement theology thing that we've replaced the nation of Israel, which is satanic nonsense, to be quite frank. Um, what is Lutheranism? Uh, it's Kind of like you have beer and you have light beer. Well, Lutheranism is light Catholicism. You know, the beer is Catholicism. Lutheranism is light Catholicism. So that's my answer to that. You know. Oh, just a very quick thing to all the commenters. If you, if you could, if you have a question, put question on the thing so I can, I can see them. Yep. <clears throat> Jonah Spiker. Um, any thoughts on Bibles in different languages? Currently learning Mandarin, Cantonese, Japanese, and Korean. Wanted to practice reading with the Bible in those languages. Not sure what to get. Um, it's tricky when you translate from one language to another. Uh, going directly over anybody that knows different languages, you, you can't just translate from one language to another just word for word. There's a lot of different things there. Um, God has never made it a major thing to have his word in every single language. Um, you know, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, you have the Lord makes the Bible available in Hebrew, New Testament, Greek, a little bit of, you know, you can say Aramaic there or whatever, but it's, you know, 
you just have to be careful with the thing of translations. You know, obviously, if you pick up a translation in any of those languages and it reads, you know, they change First Timothy 3.16 and they change First John 5.7 and they, you know, then you say, okay, I know the spirit behind it. So uh, what do we have here? Question, how do I respond on Revelation 12, 3, my God? I don't think he has the right reference. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that it's and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. I don't think he had the right chapter and verse there. I'll answer this while you're coming up with that if you want to. Question, Brian, are you going to make more videos of 5G about the whole 5G, 6G thing? No idea. Um, that's not really kind of on my radar right now. Um, <clears throat> question, will we be vegetarian in the millennial kingdom? Will we marry and have children in that period? Um, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to be marrying in the millennial kingdom. Um, I think that we are there, you know, conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So I don't think we're going to be there like with that. Um, as far as vegetarianism is concerned, um, you know, there is the thing of there's, you know, sacrifices, animal sacrifices there in the temple in the future. So um, I don't think there's going to be vegetarianism either. Okay. Question, is the day approaching in verse 25 in Hebrews 10, referring to the day of Christ, compare Hebrews 10 verse 25 to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Hmm. Okay, second this one's two versus one and two. Do you want to? Do you have any comments on that question? Uh, no, no, I was looking at some other ones, but go ahead. Okay. Um, day approaching in verse twenty-five. Yeah, Christ compares Hebrews ten verse twenty-five to. Yeah, the, the whole the, the thing of day of Christ. People say, well, it's just always a reference to the rapture, never a reference to the second coming. I have a whole video on that. You know where he uh second thessalonians chapter two um verse two it talks about you know that the day of christ is at hand and not to be troubled and things and people say that's the rapture it can't be the rapture in context no way um and when you look at verse five in second thessalonians chapter two it says remember you not that when i was yet with you i told you these things go back to first thessalonians chapter five and he says the day of the lord so the day of christ can be the day of the lord and I believe in context here and in Hebrews chapter 10, it's talking about the second coming. So, you know, that, that one's kind of a hard one to answer really quickly. Um, how do you respond on Revelation 3.12? I, I have it pulled up. That, that's, what he, that's what he meant to put. He had it backwards. Oh, okay. uh, if, you, if you read the verse, because, again, uh, this, this is Jesus speaking to the church of Sardis. Yeah. But he, he says, he's, this is Jesus speaking, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the, the name of the city of my God, which is in New Jerusalem, which cometh down at heaven from my God. And I'll write, so I, 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 I see where you're going out with this, because, okay, if he's God, why is he saying my God? Okay. Um, I mean, there's different ways you can look at this. Just one that comes to the top of my head. Um I'm sure there's, there, I'm sure there's better answers, but this is the one that came to my came to mind quickly. First Corinthians uh, 11, verse uh, three is kind of the fir first thing I, I think of, but which says here, but I would, but I have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Okay, again, God being the Father. Um, I, I, because again, because again, you see all this through, all throughout Revelation. You know, of him that sat on the throne, that's reference to the Father. It's his his kingdom, his temple. Mm -hmm. But Jesus also is God because he is the body. But the, the point is though, again, a soul is greater than a is, is, an, is greater than a body. So 
because get, get, the thing is, it, this is the thing I'm, I'm, I'm covering in great detail in my book is showing what actually man is comprised of and actually what a soul actually is. And if you understand what a soul is, it's, I mean, it's like the command center, quote unquote. I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if, I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. So in other words, so, so that soul is the head of Christ because that's why, you know, you know, God, the father sent the son, you know, yeah. so hopefully I'll answer that. Like, mm -hmm. And when he got on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Exactly. So, yeah, you know, and, and again, what's the reverse of that? Okay. If you're a Trinitarian, you know, is, is Jesus a God? And then he his my God is the father or something. See, you know, so you gotta be careful. Some of that stuff. Uh, question, John 3, 13, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven, is Jesus saying that he is in heaven while being on earth? Well, yes. Yeah. The soul is in heaven, you know, so yes. And keep, keep in mind, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Yep. Question, will the rapture uh, come back with the son of God? Yes. The bride, you know, the marriage of, of the lamb in Revelation 19, and she comes back with him, and then you have the marriage supper on the earth. Uh, that question's for you there. Right, Jacob, I see Amazon has your book for $9.99. Is it best to buy from Bezos or directly from you? Um, actually, for me, is better. I mean, you can buy from Amazon, um, but uh, if you do buy it from if, – if you type in Lulu uh, Publishing and search, and search my book there um, – that one actually is, is more directly towards me, but it doesn't matter either way, really. All right. Question. If a Catholic family member passes away, is it wrong to go to the funeral if they decide to have it at a Catholic church? I wouldn't go. I wouldn't set, set foot in a Catholic church, quite frankly. Um, question. What is it? What is it to resist to the blood? You have not yet resisted on the blood, striving against sin. Um, hmm, I'd have to look at the context of that one. Do you want to, do you have any thoughts on that one? I'm trying to think of how to answer that. But <laughs> it's actually a good question. I, because uh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say anything. That's I'm like, hmm. yeah. I mean, you know, some of the stuff that people asking questions, I can't just say, oh, okay, you know, I'd have to do the research and do the study on it. And um, you know, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who, is, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted, ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. Um, you know, man, that's, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough one just to, I could just explain it real quickly. You know, the book of Hebrews has a lot of things in it that are kind of, you know, not pointed directly doctrinally at us. Um, I would just simply say you haven't, you know, had to die, you know, for your sins. Jesus Christ did it. He took on your sins, you know, and you know, nailed him to the cross. He paid for your sin um, without getting into a real big study on that thing. But very good question. Um, uh, here. Question to call upon the name of the Lord is to call upon Jesus. Well. You know, yeah, you call out to the, to the Lord and you know, just say, Lord, please, you know, I need to be saved or whatever. If you want to say Jesus, yeah, go ahead. Uh, question, what language do you think was spoken in the Garden of Eden? And do you think it was the same language spoken all the way up to the Tower of Babel? Uh, I actually heard an interesting thing on that, that you can find a lot of the um, roots of other languages in Hebrew. So I would say it's probably Hebrew. And what the Tower of Babel you know, the Lord didn't create new languages. He just confounded the one that was there. So I would say that most languages are actually jumbled up Hebrew. So, okay, we already looked at that one. That one's underneath that one. Um, 
Question, will the third of the Jews that were not cut off get saved in the time of Jacob's trouble? Zechariah 13, verse 8. These, these questions, you know, I can't just, you know, answer this stuff real quick. They're supposed to be easy questions, you know. Can we talk about, you know, how person could actually be plural instead of singular, you know? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's a, it's a very good question. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I do not. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd have to do a lot of research on that. I can't just answer that one real quickly. Question, can you explain Revelation 22, verse 19? It has always confused me. Well. Um, I have that pulled up. Um, go ahead. The, I would, because you know, I, I would say, because again, you know, looking at its context, I mean, this is, there is, it is pointed towards the people in the, as we would call, you know, like the time of Jacob's trouble. So that's, that's more of the context is where it's applied to. So, I mean, again, it, it's true. I mean, I will say anyone that answers, that actually physically takes out the word of God, you're not even saved to begin with, you know, you know, just let's make that clear. But especially if you're in the time of Jacob's trouble and you're taking away, you're, you're, and you're taking stuff out of, the, out of the word of God. Yeah. He's blotting you out of the book of life. You're getting, you are getting those things which are contained in this book, meaning revelation. You're going to have that, you know, all his judgment wrath poured on you. So that's how I'd answer that. Yep. I agree. Question: When Jesus began sweating blood in the Garden of, in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, had the shedding of blood for the remission of sin already begun? No, well, never thought about that. That's a good point. Um, can't say yes because I can't show you a scripture that says that's when it started or something. But it's a interesting theory. Um, Dallas Kiever question: To confess, as in Romans ten nine, is a confession to God the Father that you need His Son for salvation. It's not a confession to another man or openly, right? Yeah, you don't confess to anybody. It's you're calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Man can't save you. Question: What's your thoughts on gay couples adopting? As this is what's causing a major argument between me and my lost wife. Um, yeah, sodomites should not be able to adopt uh, children. Um, you know the the whole thing for you know, when you are married to a lost person. Um, in your case, your lost wife. Uh, stay together if you can live peaceably if you can but if it comes right down to it and you and she's not going to get saved and she's not going to submit to God's word leave her divorce her and I, it's going to be rough it's going to be very rough but you know salvation the Lord will turn family members against people and stuff like that so <clears throat> the question is the coronavirus a sign of the last days or Bible prophecy well pestilence yeah yeah I would say so. Question, do you, any unsaved Gentiles during the time of Jacob's trouble endure to the end? If so, does it matter if they had any faith in the Lord Jesus Christ during that time or based all on works? Um, the the mystery of God is going to be finished in that time. You know, Re Revelation chapter 10 talks about that. So I would say at some point in time, there's, there's not going to be any atheists, okay, in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to say, yeah, okay, the Bible's true. God is real. You know, they're going to try to explain away, I think, at first, you know, a lot of the plagues and things, but it's going to be the Bible confirmed. So you get to the book of Re or, uh, Matthew chapter 25, they're getting judged based on their works. So, but their works are because they believe, hey, Jesus is going to come back. That's what the Bible says here. And so there's a sense of faith there, but they will be judged by their works. And I do think that there will be some that actually make it through. It'll be rather rough, though. Question, has Jesus always appeared as the humble looking Jewish man? No. No. Uh, that, that actually I have a that I'm say my study on the glory of the Lord. That check that out. Go to my channel, look that up. It, it'll it'll explain all that. And and that's what we're talking about earlier, all like those supposed like theophanies. He when when you saw God in the old testament, you saw this very glorious being. And then in the New Testament, you're seeing the same thing because Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Daniel falls down and he can't speak, you know, and I mean, John, same kind of thing, you know, uh, it, you know, when we get called up, it isn't going to be a oh, Jesus. Hey, you know, let's run over and give you a hug. Uh-uh, no, <laughs> no. Um, question, does Lord always refer to God? Hope that's an easy question. Well, 
I mean, in many times, I mean, many times, yes, and other times, no. I mean, you can, I mean, for example, 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 3 verse 17, um, where it says, now the Lord is that spirit, you know, you know, so you, I mean, so I mean, you know, I, I, you know again, again, also again, with, with Jesus Christ, you know, he's referred to as the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, I mean, I mean, like, yes, I mean, if you mean God as in the Father, yes, but he's also, that also can be called of Jesus and the Holy Spirit as well. Yep. Oh, I missed one there. Sorry. Um, uh, why did King James or the King James Bible die a horrible death? Well, in, at, back then in 1611, it wasn't called the King James Bible. People called it that. It kind of stuck. It was called the authorized version, first and foremost. But, uh, you know, why did um, a lot of the early Christians die horrible deaths? You know, a lot of people get saved and they die horrible deaths. Question, is there a difference between remission and forgiveness of sin? Yeah, brother, I'd have to, you know, look up the different, you know, the two words there and things. Uh, I've always kind of assumed it's kind of the same thing, basically. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I would I'd say probably the same thing. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, I punch, I, I, I punch into Webster's Twenty Dictionary. It comes up the same word. Okay. Question: After starting to try to and get saved, things I knew were, was wrong before now really disgust me. Is this normal? You know, when you become a new cre creature in Christ Jesus, but yeah, you know, starting to try and get saved. Well, you either are saved or you're not. I'd be careful about that. Um. That's, uh, that's just, yeah. That, okay. Question. I know I asked this earlier after, but about determining your nationality. But I think the Jews go by their mom's side, right? Because it's it might be different than Christians. Yeah. The, the Jewish thing that for you to actually be a Jew, you have to be able to prove it through your mother's lineage and things. Again, I, I'm careful with what I say because people twist my words on things like that. So hopefully, you understand that. No. Uh, Question, JT and Brian, have either of you looked into Gematria, Gematria and how all mainstream news is coded with numbers that come from occult Kabbalah? No. I'm familiar with some of that, but I'm not like, like I mean, I've heard of that term. And I'm familiar with some of that, but not in great detail. Right. Question, Brian, how could you counsel that man to divorce his wife for any reason besides adultery? A lost person is not biblical grounds for divorce. First Corinthians 7 says to stay unless they leave first. Um, no, you're wrong on that. Uh, let me find the verse here. Um, okay, verse 13. Well, actually, we'll start verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let her let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. Where does it say anything about adultery? It doesn't. If they leave, then let them leave. Sorry, but you're wrong. Question, are you are either of you familiar with E.C. Moore's teaching? E.C. Moore, I think, was a hyper-dispensationalist. I'm pretty sure. I'm I, I I don't know much about him, but I've heard the name. Yeah. And you know, believe me, I, I'm not making trying to make light of a divorce situation. You get divorced, it's gonna be there's no such thing as a good divorce, okay? Unless you're really wicked and wife swapping or something like that. I mean, divorce is terrible. I recommend against it every single time. And a man should really take control of his, you know, marriage and, and whatever else. I'm not trying to make a light thing of just, oh, you don't like her? I just leave. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, please don't make me out to be doing that. But, you know, if you have a bad situation and they're lost and they're making your life miserable and whatever else, and I've known brethren, I've counseled plenty over the years that you get a woman and she is just making the guy's life miserable and she knows that he's not going to divorce her. Um, 
in terms of unless she's committed adultery and so she doesn't do that and whatever else. You have to stick with what the scriptures say. Uh, question, the fact that the Jews never believed did the Great Commission in a sense actually fail? Well, many Jews did believe in the first century. So you can't really say that they didn't believe. Nationally, yeah, they they you know didn't accept him as their Messiah, but many did believe. Question, is it okay for a Christian to watch Israeli news to keep up on the times or not to mess with it? Um, any news media is very much, uh, it's just propaganda for that country. You know, they're, they're lying on so many things. Question, can you explain why the word hell has a capital H in Revelation 6? Normally hell is with a small h. My answer to that is just I I think it's because again because I don't know maybe maybe someone does but it's because you look at the verse verse eight of Revelation six and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death so on him so there's a person called death you know and hell fought with him and power is given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth so that's referring to two different people there. Now, who exactly they are, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know particularly, but it, it is a person, a, a person's. Um, it, it, it's one, it's Revelation. It's one of those things where you can't really be, be sure. You know, well, at least I, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, question, have either of you heard of missionary Spencer Smith? Is If so, is he safe to watch? I've heard of him, but I don't know anything about him really. No idea. Um, <clears throat> please help. I want to be saved. What must I do? Thank you for everything. Well, um, you know, we, I think, do you have any salvation messages on your channel? Me? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And you know, I, I have plenty of gospel messages, but it's just a matter of, are you a sinner? You know, uh, can you look at yourself and say, yeah, I, I couldn't make it into heaven right now with my good works or whatever else. Um, understand that Jesus Christ is the one that died on the cross. And, you know, just as simple as calling upon the name of the Lord and saying, OK, I'm a sinner. I know I can't make it into heaven. You know, I want to be saved and I don't want this life anymore that I have. Please save me. It, you know, if I can boil it really down. But you really should go through the scriptures and, you know, watch my salvation message. Watch Brother Jacob get on his channel, look at some of his stuff and things there and, and really make sure you're seeing the scriptures, that you understand it and you're not just following what I've said or what brother Jacob said. And, and just, I'm, sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you none, but if you, if you shoot me an email, I'd be more than happy to send you a little booklet that I wrote. Yep. Um, about salvation. Just shoot me an email. I can, I can send you one. Yep. Amen to that question. Brian, have you read Luke eight forty three through 48. Jesus says, daughter, thy father hath made thee whole go in peace. Jesus says, father, to call a child of his daughter or son. Uh, Luke chapter 8. Let's see the context of this. 43. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? Uh, when all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and sayest thou who touched me. And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue was gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Man, yeah, interesting that you could say, you know. If he's God the Father, he could say, you know, call her daughter. Interesting way to look at that. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm through here and then the thing. <laughs> I get so far behind and it goes and skips and I'm like, oh man, how yeah. did this? Um
Someone has a question for me. Um, yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, there you go. Can Christians listen to Veronica with the language? I wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, and it, look, I mean, hey, and I'll be sad to me, hey, I'd be lying if, if, if sometimes that stuff does, I still sometimes struggle with some of that stuff where that, that old man creeps back in, sure. But, you know, short answer, no, don't listen to it. <laughs> There's no, yep. no benefit. It's just going to ruin your life, you know. Mm -hmm. Question, are there any good study Bibles out there that won't try to teach me the gap theory? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good question. Ruckman does, you know, the common man study Bible does. Hmm. I don't know. I, I know, you know, just the regular Bible doesn't. So there you go. Question. What are your thoughts on essential oils that are popular among Christian circles? Um, essential oils. Like yeah, there you go. Essential oils are fine if you don't ascribe spiritual properties to them. Right. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm say don't, don't, don't start like doing like lotus position and stuff like that i mean no but i mean i mean I'm, like for example i have a thing with headaches and i know brian you do too like i have a thing of peppermint oil like it, this stuff helps it works i mean yep yep essential oils are fine um question what is your opinion on the call for an up a call for an uprising youtube channel or something yeah i know who he is uh i wouldn't watch him he, he's into a bunch of all, all this like illuminati conspiracy stuff uh, mm -hmm. he's just gonna, he's just gonna put you in a spirit of fear i mean i mean i'm not saying everything he says is wrong but it, it, at the end of the day it's like obviously people the world's going to hell you know the, the, they're all off the, the world's wicked and lost i don't need to be told hey look there's a satanic symbol in this some singer i don't care about you know i mean you just avoid that stuff it, it just it just makes you fearful yep i agree um, when do you think the church, the body of Christ, was revealed? Well, I guess another way to say that would be um, when did the gospel start or whatever. I would say, you know, in Acts chapter 2, probably there, you know, Lord's revealing things to the to his Jewish disciples. But then it kind of goes through the book of Acts, transitions through there without getting into a big thing on that. Question, what would receiving future millennium rewards be an acceptable motive to serve God and live holy? It's not the only motive, obviously, but it's one of the main ones I have. Yeah, that's fine. You know, judgment seat of Christ and then, you know, thousand year kingdom. Uh, certainly, you know, wanting to, um, you know, wanting to look forward to that. Absolutely. You know, lay up treasures in heaven, not on earth. <clears throat> Is your guest familiar with J. Vernon McGee? And if so, any views on his teaching preaching? Well, he's. Trinitarian. I was actually looking at some of his stuff for research. Um, I think I think I passed up on some of his stuff because I cause at some point it's my thing is okay. It's like okay, how far do I take it? You know, because it just there's there's an endless supply of just Trinitarian stuff out there. So, uh, I mean, if if I'm not mistaken, I wasn't he on his Paul, James White's book? Uh, no, I'm thinking of something else. But no, I mean he he's I wouldn't listen to him. Yep. Question, was Ken Hovind saved and got mind control or was he never saved to begin with? Well, his his thing about the, this, the whole purpose of CSC Ministries is the ecumenical agenda. He That was his court affidavit before he went to prison. So major questions on that man. Question, then at what point did the humble Jewish looking man come into existence? Well, uh, well in Philippians chapter 2, um, we mentioned it earlier a little bit with the, well, the whole James White thing. Um, but Philippians chapter two, looking at verse five, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, that's the, the glory of the Lord thing where I was referring to earlier. Okay. He had, he always has us had a physical body. Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. First John five twenty says, and we know that and we know the son of God is come, you know? Um, but again, he's the former God, former God means shape. You know, it's a body. Thought not right to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became a beat unto death, even the death of the cross. So when that happened at, you know, when, so when Jesus was, was born the Virgin Mary, that's, you know, and that's when he had that, you know, he, that's when he had a couple of flesh like you and I. Um, and then, and then, and then after, you know, he, his, his death and resurrection, he then, he then eventually returned back to the form of God. You can see those scriptures again. And like I said, watch that saying the glory of the Lord. I, I, I get into some of those scriptures. Yep. Question: Does the angels have three parts: body, soul, spirit? 
I uh, no angel. I would say angel. Well, because um, angels, they, they're called angels. ministering spirits in Hebrews yeah. one fourteen. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was about to go to. Yeah, they're because they're called they're called ministering spirits, and and yes, they can take on physical form, but they do not have a soul. And and that's what makes the thing about man's interesting because man is directly made after the image and likeness of 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 God. Mm -hmm. Man, only man can say that. Everyone else, they there might be similar aspects, but he um. They're just separate. <laughs> what was the name of the oil you showed for headaches? Uh, this one is this one's peppermint. This one's now. Um, this one I got from I got from GNC, but you can get them from really anywhere. I mean, I mean, and the thing is, there are varying degrees of these. Some are like kind of junk, you know, and then some are like this one's actually a better one. And keep in mind also too, though, they, they get expensive, so be, <laughs> be careful. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Question: Have you guys heard of someone called Edward P. F. One two three. We're laughing not at you. We're laughing at Edward G. P. F. One two three. Yeah, oh, we know him. <laughs> yeah, we've heard of him. Yeah, he's a total heretic. Uh, go if ahead. You want, if you want to, <laughs> okay. For those who don't know, go to my channel. It's my most recent video I did. He he came out. He came out. I think it's been about two weeks ago. He, and I, I made a I made a slight reference to this earlier, <laughs> without saying his name. But he actually says that the words "is come" and "has come" mean the same thing. And he says he says "is come" is archaic, and now we can use "has come." And it's like, yeah, I it's, mean, it, it's a two totally different verb tense, you know. Mm -hmm. Two yep. words. You can. I, mean, I, I, I still lose my mind in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's he's made I think whatever six hundred videos against me or something. I mean, uh -huh. he's a nut. His salvation, his testimony thing is supposedly he got saved as a young child going to a Catholic church. So yeah, uh, you know, prayers of work and real, you know, repentance is a change of mind, of unbelief to belief. You know, yep. no evidence. Your salvation afterwards. He's hyper dispensational, is essentially. You can go down the list, you know. Yep. Uh, Emma J, I sent you a letter about a week ago, Brother Brian, hoping you received it already. Yes, we did. And I was really neat to hear from you. And um, just to encourage you, there's a lot of people going through what you're going through the thing of, you know, a young woman wanting to be a keeper at home and things and, and stuff. And so, yes, we did. Thank you very much for your letter. Um, are the Rochester singers a good Christian music source? Uh, yes and no. They 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 did some song about the uh, Holy Spirit fire or something. I had somebody warn me about them with that some charismatic thing. A lot of their stuff is okay, but you know, um, be careful. Uh, are you familiar with? Trey Searchy Truth Time Radio? No. Nope. Nope. Um, uh, question, why animal sacrifices in the millennial kingdom? I think it's purely a, a kind of a ceremonial thing, whatever, without getting into a whole big deal on it. Um, is first Corinthians 15 28 a good verse to show Trinitarians? This is one, yeah. This is one that I have seen try to use. Um, um but it, it, this one actually is, is actually one that actually a lot of the cults love to use. Like, they, we're talking about modalism, they use that one a lot. I know, I know the Arians like to use this one a lot. Um, first Corinthians 15, uh, where are we at 28? Um, if you, if you look at the whole context, um, but it, but it says here, we'll start at verse 23 to get the context, but every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits after they that are, are Christ that is coming, then cometh the end when, when, when he shall have, when, when, he, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the father. So again, God being defined as the father there, let's make that clear. Um, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power for he must reign till he put all enemies under his foot or in his feet. You can see that in Hebrews chapter one those different things in there. Uh, verse 26, the last enemy that, that shall be destroyed is death for he hath put all things under his feet. Cause he's the head of all things. You know, he's, he's head, of the, he's, 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 head, he's head of the body of the church. 
Uh, but when he has, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also be himself shall be subject unto him that put all, put all things under him that God may be all in all. Well, see, this is what we're talking about earlier about where we're just referring to, you know, my God type of thing. That's what we're referring to. He's not, because again, he's currently sitting at the right hand of the father. After that happens, then no longer he's no longer. It's all back and complete. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know how you want to say it, but the point is, it's, they're all back. <laughs> it's all back together completely. That that's why it says. Then so that's why he says also himself be subject unto him, you know, the one that sat on the throne, him that that put all things under him, you know, God, the, the Father, put you know gave just you give it to Jesus again. Read read Ephesians chapter one. That it gets into some of that, um, too. So yeah, sorry for the long answer, but that's how I that's how I answer it. Yep. Question is the spirit of God in the Old Testament a reference to the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's like, again, just just remember, uh, yeah, brother, it's just one spirit, you know. Yep. You know, so when so when you read those passages where where, where, Richard, where God the Father is speaking and he, he talks about His Spirit, or whatever. Okay, then, then if 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 we're thinking Trinitarian, for example. So then he's got a spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. And then, then Jesus has his own spirit. You see what I'm saying? It's just one spirit. So that it'd be his spirit. Yep. But good question. Question. After the thousand years kingdom, how can the devil still deceive the people? Because people are very easy to deceive. The devil uses the same tactics over and over and over again. Gives them, oh, here's the promise of wisdom and wealth and, and whatever else. It works every time. Yep. Question, Brian. I have asked Michael D'Angelo this before, but was Eve lying to the serpent while he was lying to her simultaneously? God never said if they touched the fruit, they would die. Yeah, they're adding to God's word. Yeah, the devil starts to tell you, hey, you can be smart enough to do it. You're a scholar. I think that you have some really good things to say. You know? Yeah. Um, Now, let's see here. Are there any? <clears throat> um, I have so many questions as I'm so excited about God, but I'll try not to overload with questions. What is Calvinism? Um, a philosophical tradition made up by a man in the 16th century named John Calvin. Basically teaching that God forces people to be saved and forces people to go to hell. And there is no such thing as free will. Nutty nonsense. James White is also a Calvinist, so again, another reason to reject him as a total lost heretic. And then so is this guy too, Walter Martin. Uh, yeah, he's also he's also reformed. And there's there's different levels of Calvinist. I get that. Yeah. Too. There's hyper Calvinist, but it's still it's just heretical. They're all bad. <laughs> yeah. Question, brother Jacob, do you have a bookshelf tour video? I do not. Um, I am getting the point though. My bookshelf is getting too it's already filled up already i've 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 had to resort to go to ebooks for for the research because i just had so many i just couldn't keep in the shelf and i i got more off camera but i don't know one of these days i might do a bookshelf tour um what 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 really what i need is a, is a whole nother bookshelf is what i need <laughs> but so okay there's there's a couple other questions there but i i'm gonna have to get going here we're going sure. to end this thing um, because we got a big drive ahead of us. So, but uh, just like I said earlier in the, in the live stream, everybody I'd really like to request that you pray for brother Jacob as he's going through the study of this thing. Um, many years ago when I first got into ministry, you know, as a younger man, I remember the attacks that came, especially as a single guy, Jacob single. And um, it, it's, it can get rough at times, so please hold him up in prayer and just, just uh, really, you know, pray the Lord helps him to stay focused and pray the Lord helps him, you know, protects him uh, because the spiritual attacks can be very ferocious when you're serving the Lord. And this is an issue that, um, I mean, I think the shocking thing to me that we were talking about earlier, let me get rid of that quote there. It's up on the screen. <laughs> the, the, uh, Shocking thing is that this Trinity stuff has been going on for a long time. Thousands and thousands of years, people have had this thing of this idea of gods, but there's only one God, but there's more than gods, but it's just God. They've been doing this for a long time. Um, it is a satanic counterfeit. 
And that's just as simple as it is. If you believe in the Trinity, you are believing a satanic counterfeit. Um, and so, um, do you have anything you want to say in closing? Um, I, I will just I, I say thank you again for everyone that's been praying for me. I really do appreciate appreciate that. Um, this has been going on for really every, basically after I was done with the first book, the Romans 10 controversy, it wasn't too much long after that. I immediately started getting into this one because I just, I really felt the Lord pushing me just to do, you know, do something um, on it. And just believe me. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I have learned so much just by actually sitting down and just studying more about who God is and look, I'll grant you the, the, the it's the mystery of Godness is great. You know, it is, it is, it is a mystery. Let me make that clear. That being said, also, I mean, there are scriptural commands to actually to understand the mysteries. Not completely. Again, there it's impossible to understand God. You, it's impossible. We, we, we can't figure him out. But there's the verses all talk about, again, there is the simplicity that is in Christ. And we, I know we have demonstrated many times, it's, it is not that complicated. You just have to just, and, that, and that's the thing, my best advice to everyone is just, again, the just should live by faith. You just take it, you know, as what the Bible says, you know. You know, uh, you know, again, again, because, again, if James White, for example, actually believed what he believed when he says you shouldn't be you know, changing words around. Well, OK, then he wouldn't be come to the conclusion of the Trinity. None of these guys would if you took it. Put it but now they none of them do. But um, I don't I cannot set any dates for when the book will be out. I, I don't know. Um, I still I still haven't even typed a word yet because it's just been a lot of research and I've been covering a lot of different areas because I want to be thorough. I mean, and that's the thing. Again, I already know what they teach these different groups, but I need to have their quotes. So I've had to sit here and just <laughs> go through just oh, just <laughs> so many of these books that just never end and they never get to the point. <laughs> but it's all worth it in the end. I'm I'm very excited, and um, I guess the sooner the better. But hopefully, I would. My, I'm gonna take. I'll, I'll like I said, no dates, but I'm guessing late summer, autumn type. I'm guessing this probably wouldn't be out. I don't know. I really don't know, but it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of really interesting. Just a lot. I mean, I'm, you have a lot of scripture. We're covering a lot of scripture I, and I'm not going to get all philosophical with anyone. I'm going to make it really easy to understand for everyone and just show where these guys look. Here's what they say. Here's where they're wrong. Scripture, 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 you know, and just go through it. It's got, I'm going to have, a, I'm, I'm going I'm to have a, a whole bunch of illustrations and pictures, you know, not of God, but I'm just saying though, just, you know, you know, demonstrate stuff and, so it'll be really exciting. So again, if you all can really pray for me, I really greatly appreciate that. And if you do have questions, um, you can feel free to email me. I will tell you though, I'm very slow on getting to my emails. So I apologize. I don't <laughs> for that up front. I'm just, I'm bad with my emails. I don't know why. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so like I said, thank you all. And uh, thank you, Brian, for having me on to discuss this today. Yeah, not a problem. Um, and as far as we, we're going to close with prayer here real quickly, but in terms of praying for enemies and things, you pray for your enemy. Um, but there are people that have made their mind up and you have to understand that and you have to, you know, let them alone. Mm -hmm. And just, that's my thing with this. Believe me, there's me a lot of people. And, and again, I'm not trying to help hype myself up, but we've talked about this. I have just, this is weird feeling that even way back when I first started doing this, that this is going to really make some people angry. And I, 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 and I don't know why it's just that weird feeling I have. It could be just because I'm maybe because I'm just hyping myself up. I don't know. I, I'm trying to be humble about it, but I just think that th this is going to really cause a ruckus with people. And, and like, and like you said, there's gonna be a lot of people. It don't matter what you could say. They are just, it doesn't matter. You know, my prayer for the people out there is the people that, that, yeah, the, yeah, they don't believe what we believe, for example, but they're questioning and they're having questions. Those are the people I pray for, the people that that are really like not sure of themselves here. I pray for them. You know, what I mean, those are the ones that need the need that need the most. Because a lot of these guys, like you said, they're just dead set and what. Mm -hmm. they'll, 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 again, it's it we're it's the it's the end times. The spirit of Antichrist is alive and well. You see it everywhere, and you because that's what most people talk to anymore. It's just. I mean, they, they don't know anything. I mean, they just don't know anything. And, and it's like, you, you can you can hardly even get a foot in the door because they don't even know what you're talking about. But I mean, the most basic of things. I mean, I used to be like that. You know, praise God, I got saved. But I mean, believe me, when I first got saved, I I mean, I, I'm the example if I knew just the the most bare, most bare minimum possible, you know, which, which, which is not a bad thing. I'm just saying, though, you know. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you, Lord, for your word that we're not left in the dark. We know what your word says. Uh, there's a lot of things, Lord, about you that we can't understand. And uh, I thank you for that, too, that you are far above what our earthly minds can comprehend. Um, you wouldn't be worth worshiping if we understood everything about you. But, uh, Lord, I do pray for the people that are stuck in this Trinitarian uh, system. There's so much pride there, Lord, and, and yet so much confusion. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would convict these people and that uh, some of them would drop this pride and say, yeah, it's going to put me at odds with a lot of people going against the Trinity, but I have to do it because it doesn't line up with Scripture. I pray, Lord, that they would they would line up their beliefs with your word and not with traditions of men. And uh, I just pray that all of us would stand firm until the time that you catch us up, Lord. And I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. That's going to be it. And uh, thank you to everybody that tuned in. Um, thank you to everybody for your prayers. And we will see you. See, see you. No, no. See you in future videos. All right. That's going to be it. See ya.